Yeah, whoever's doing that two to four revolving show might want to ask Eric why he talks through his teeth. A lot of people want to know that. I want to know about yeah. all this gambling that's going on in this country. In the, in the National Hockey League, all these yeah. guys are betting football. There you go starting me off on hockey again. We're on the road to hell today. It's not a hockey story. There's a great headline in the New York Post. Uh, the front page, it says Betsky. It shows Gretzky's <laughs> pictures of Betsky. Yeah, I love it. I hate him like poison, man. Need to that nothing, nothing could please me more than uh, seeing him go down. And what timing, too, huh? They're just opening the Olympics in Turin. Yeah. I'm sorry, in Torino. And uh, got all this crap going on. And apparently, the gen- how about this one? The general manager of the team bet 500 on the over in the, in the Super Bowl game through Tocket. Yeah. It's like everybody in the office was in it. It's, now there are, other, there are players on other teams that are You know, being the question is on every other commercial that's on air up here, as you can imagine, because they're sick with this hockey thing, so they're obsessed with him. And it just makes me nauseous. But it would be one thing if you're dealing with people who needed the money, you know. But uh, like Pete Rose, your buddy Pete Rose. Now, there's a guy who's always down and out, who's always, like, going on the, uh, you know, peddling his baseball cards and signing uh, people's ass and whatever he can to get a few bucks because he's losing his ass. But uh, these people have got more money than God. The wife is a famous actress, and he's uh, got more money than anybody could ever want, and they're involved in this crap. How much do you think he's worth? I say fry their ass. Uh, How much do you think he's worth? Millions. Uh, I, I couldn't even begin to tell you. A Twenty or thirty million, maybe. Oh, more than that. More than that. Millions and millions. More money than you and I could lose. Uh, well, that's right. In the next he, ten years. He owns a piece of the hockey franchise, right? And and, and his wife is a hell of a piece. So, you know. I don't think she made that much money. Well, whatever. But he I gives her a pretty pay. good. Al- I guess he gives her a pretty good allowance. I would think. I so. I mean, you're married, and your wife comes in and says, I mean, uh, "There's no question that love had nothing to do with that uh, romance." Do you remember the movie Lost in America? No. Albert Brooks? No. Oh, he's an advertising executive, decides to drop out, takes the life savings, and they cash in, and they get a, a an RV, and they're going to drive across the country, and they stop overnight in Las Vegas. She goes down to the casino and loses it all at the roulette table, the whole mm-hmm. life savings, and he goes downstairs and finds out that she's lost all that money. And Gary Marshall played the part of the casino boss. He goes in the office to ask him if he can get the money back that she made a mistake. It was very funny. Yeah, I guess you had to see it. Yeah, well, what this about is... that Bette Midler movie uh, about Vegas? That was a good movie. I can't never think of the name of but that this movie. This is the same thing. Janet Jones, although well, she didn't take the life savings, but seventy-five thousand. Yeah, she loses a half a million over three months. She's betting some serious money. No kidding. Well, when you get, look, when you got the big bucks, you're not going to go bet five, ten bucks here and there. It's all relative. I understand. Guys with the big bucks aren't playing the, uh, you know, fifty cent slot machine, man. But you can, uh, you can lose millions if you bet enough. I mean, you can blow the life savings or whatever yeah. you got. Oh, listen, I could take you right out to Woodbine now and talk to you just pick one at random, and they'll tell you how they lost their pension. I have people come up to me all the time. People I just don't even know their name. I just see them, you know, casually, frequently there. Oh, this one old guy a week ago, very nice guy, old, older than Methuselah. I lost my life pension here. I can't come here anymore. And I, I you know, and I'm very nice to him because I don't want to like uh, be rude. But I'm thinking to myself, why are you here? I don't see any guys with Uzis who like uh, you know are are holding you here at gunpoint. Why did you come back? You're going to finally get even with Hallandale once those slots go in. Yeah, and all those mean? people start going broke. Oh, going to be losing their ass. Good. They won't even be able to afford the early bird. Yep. And by the way, I hate to break the news to your buddy there from um, the new Monday Night Football team. What's his name? Uh, Glory Hole. What was his name? Hersh Hole. Hersh. What? Tony Kornheiser. Tony Kornholer, Yeah. And he says, "Oh well, uh, the games are going to start at 8:40 or whatever, so now he won't be able to go to the early bird that starts at 6:15. All you can eat early, early bird. First of all, he stole that from me. Number one, the whole early bird stick, and number two, the early bird doesn't start at 6:15. And number three, it's not all you can eat, Tony. So talk about something you know about, which has nothing to do with the early birds in South Florida, you jackass. God. But anyway, that's right. I want to start picking on your buddies in the business again, which is almost anybody, like even Pete Rose." I mean, when, when you're, you know, you admit to being buddies with Pete Rose, next thing you're going to be admitting to gambling, and then you'll be right in there with old Betsky and his wife. I saw Pete last weekend. Did you really? Yeah. Oh, he should only, there's a special place in, in hell for him. There's a special place in the forum shop. He should be in the, ha- the hell of fame. 
Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure that there is. He's there signing baseballs. Let me let me just long. say, anytime you see a guy sitting at the racetrack, it's got a stack of hundred dollar bills uh, sitting in front of him. You know, you're dealing with a real major a hole. I'll tell you that right now. What a jerk. God, just talk to the tellers at uh, Calder and Gulfstream about uh, Pete Rose. I saw him in a casino at Caesars the other night. They might, they might just, you mentioned his name, they might just kill you just out of spite, just an instant reaction. He's not well liked by the people in the casinos either. Can't imagine why. Just like Larry, your buddy Larry King. Uh huh. Go upstairs on the fourth floor and make a bet, and oh, I'll be right back. I left my money at the table, and then, uh, you know, a hundred dollar bet or whatever, and then come again, then go make a bet on the third floor and stiff the teller on the fourth floor, you know. And then if the horse won, come back, and, oh, I got it, yeah, here's the hundred. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know that's the truth, and not to mention all the checks. Roy Slanhoff used to tell me all those stories. Rest in peace. All the uh, bad checks that he cashed at the track. They used to have the Larry King Memorial drawer. <laughs> Never paid back anybody a dime, not a penny. Here's a guy talk about how much are they worth. Makes Gretzky seem like a pauper. Worth million. You can't even count the millions that King has made, based on kissing ass all these years, and never paid back anybody a dime. I remember the story in the tabloids. It was years ago now. Oh, uh, my client, his his agent, whoever the hell it was, is going to come back, and he feels bad. He's going to pay everybody back. Just BS. It was just PR. You know, make him look better. Never paid a dime. I remember so we got the uh, downtown Mickey, Mickey Brown hearings going on now. Contribute to enhancements and improvements. Yeah, the Katrina hearings, which now we find out that uh, uh, there's so many Bush lies I've got to deal with here today, I might have to stand till midnight. They, they just lie about everything, like this thing. Well, we didn't know that the levy broke the night before. Yeah, lie. Yeah. Another lie. And who they got on the committee? There's the whiny Susan Collins and Jude Lieberman. Oh, jeez. They need to get some of the people from British Parliament on there. Have you ever watched the uh, British... Parliament meetings? No, I should. Oh, you never seen that? No. Oh my God! Where they all get up and they're screaming and they're pounding on the table. Here, here, there! And Tony Blair is trying to be heard, and of course, and the other guy, and nobody's paying any attention. They're all screaming. I like the it's right. Great. I'd like fantastic. to watch the Russian Parliament sessions where they strangle each other. Yeah, that, that's what we need in, uh, that's in the good USA. Action. That's exactly what we need. Case Susan Lieberman, if he had any. In fact, Susan Collins, she ought to get up out of that chair and sit in there whining. And an emergency. Yeah. She ought to get up and slap Brownie Brown in the face right now and say, you inept idiot. Talk about talk about nepotism, man. Talk about uh, all these shills. All, all his uh, buddies, all his school buddies, got all the plum jobs, totally unqualified. And then it's like, oh, gee, we don't understand how he uh, wasn't on top of these things. Wouldn't you like to see Arlen Specter and Ted Kennedy with their hands on each other's Yes. Head? Too much Arabian horses around, uh, horsing around with his brownie brown. That, that was his background. That was what made him qualified to be. Yeah, I know. The head of FEMA. Well, listen, have a great weekend and don't lose too much. Uh, I might be doing a little gambling this weekend. Yeah, I might just be tomorrow morning, too. I've got a whole new strategy now. I stay away from the dollar Wheel of Fortune machines. They'll kill you. Yeah. Well, Find a good machine, man. Do well. I'll do it. Bring back a huge stack of bills. I'll bring back a big pot of money, and I'll put it on my uh, put it on my table in the uh, living room. Just, just sit there and stare at it. Just have it all the way up to my uh, top of my head. And you can call Toshe and make a few bets. There you go, Rick Toshe. Touche. See ya. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Friday, you bastard. In an isolated region of the West comes the heartwarming story everyone is talking about. What started as a fishing trip became something much more. Jake Gyllenhaal and Oates stars in Brokeback Mountain. Ah! Ah! Oh! Ah! I broke my back. I can't move. Hello? 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 Ah! The critics are raving about Brokeback Mountain. It's about a man with a broken back on a mountain. I think that was a, a wolf. <laughs> yeah, that was a grizzly. Oh my, I'm lost. Now where am I? Uh, that sounded like a homosexual. Oh my goodness, you're hurt. Yep, definitely a homosexual. Broke back mountain. Rated S for extreme <laughs> stupidity. Rated S for stinko, man. I have, I have lasted for an hour. Yeah. And about three times during the course of the hour, I was on the verge of nodding off. I was close. So I'm, you're laughing. I'm serious. I was fighting to keep my eyes open. Oh, better you This than is me. one of the worst movies I have ever had the displeasure of seeing in my life. It is so bad that there are no words to describe it. And just like the, uh, the what, what's the other one? The um, 
the constant Forrest gardener. Line. The constant gardener. I mean, I'd rather watch The Constant Gardener 600 times than finish watching this piece of crap. I guess over the weekend, maybe I'll find... I don't know how long this thing is. Is it like two hours? Oh, uh, another hour. Uh, I can't I even imagine another hour of this torture. <laughs> this torture. Sucks. You'd think with all the uh, sheep up there in the mountains that they you know, maybe would have found one of them that would have been friendly. But, oh, no. It, it starts out slow as molasses, and then it like goes nowhere, and then finally you just say, okay, that's enough. I've had it. And the sex scene, if that's Michelle Williams in there playing the blonde, if that's really her, yeah, I, I can't her. imagine her possibly looking any worse than she does in this movie. I mean, she, she is the definitive trailer trash bitch. I mean, she looks nasty. Okay. And about the only thing, the only thing interesting, there's supposed to be a message in the fact that there, and of course, once uh, Heath Ledger gets married to her, they start making babies like rabbits. I mean, she's just popping them out like, uh, oh yeah, like hamsters. And the sex scene there, which the, the sex scenes between him and Jake Gyllenhaal, the first one is more like a rape than a sex scene, and the second one is just really embarrassing and so bad. And then the one with her, where she finally gets down on all fours, we understand that, you know, it, it's called um, uh, it's force of habit. Yeah. Force of habit, act like a rabbit, you know? <laughs> yeah. Neurotic repetition. In other words, he's been conditioned into this. Uh, he's in the uh, that whole deal, you know? That whole deal. That whole deal. Yeah. Oh, here's one for our poll today, Curb Your Enthusiasm from Barry. Okay, you got that? Curb Your Enthusiasm. I saw about 10 minutes of one episode, and I thought, oh, not for me. But anyway, I'll, I want to spend about 20, 30 hours talking about Brokeback Mountain and save a lot of you people a lot of money. Those Public of service, might, then. Those who might be in, uh, inclined to see it just because of all the hoopla, don't do it. In fact, I just saved you folks a ton of money between the constant gardener and broke-ass uh, mounting. It, believe me, you don't want to see either one of these. I mean, this thing is so slow and goes nowhere. And the two ranch hands up there in the mouth. And, and there's not even, the, other than uh, drinking a little booze out of the bottle. Yeah. Uh, there, well, that's always the excuse. It's either the ecstasy or the booze. Yeah, right. But there, there's not even the slightest bit of warmth or uh, anything between the two of them. And yeah. all of a sudden, they're like, uh, you know, it's humpback mountain. <laughs> no, and then when the summer ends like and they that. both are uh, getting getting done with all their work with the sheep up there, they're and, uh, in. and they yeah, well see you around okay, and they get in their own pickup trucks and bye bye, and they're they're in not the slightest bit. And of course, you know when it goes beyond that, I don't know what's going to happen. And people are going to say, well, you missed the good part. Well, you know what? I'll I'll take your word for it. Not even a peck on the cheek. It's it is so <laughs> bad. And the fact that there's all this big hoopla and all oh, these yeah. fag uh, movie reviewers, oh, this is so wonderful. If you want to see a fag movie where there are two guys uh, doing stuff, uh, making love with Michael Ankeen and Harry Hamlin and Kate Jackson, how, how many years ago was that? It's got to be, be like 80 uh, something. Huh? We'll look it up. I think it's look, like do a Google it, making love with Michael Ankeen, who is, uh, I love Michael Ankeen, but at least... You know, at least there was some warmth in there and some, uh, you know, some affection, some something. Tenderness? Oh, tenderness, yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, there was like some something, but this was just uh, stupid. It was like, like gratuitous. Anyway, let's get the bad news out of the way from Iraq. It's 82. 1982, so it's 24 years. I was right, a long time ago. And that, that was a good movie. Now, you've seen that, right? I think I saw it. it was in a, wasn't it a TV movie? No. It's been on TV, I'm sure okay, that. I saw it on TV. It's, uh, it was pretty good. Pretty gay. And pretty... Uh, gay. Yeah. But if I had to choose between that and this uh, bare-ass mount, mounting thing, oh, this is just... <laughs> if anybody has the balls to call me in and tell me this is a good movie, I, I'm going to send Luca Brazzi to your house to blow your brains out if we could find any. Now, come on. Don't dissuade them. Maybe they saw something you didn't. we got 75,000 stories about Bush lying today. It really is amazing how he's including the mayor of L.A. Just never heard nothing about this alleged... Uh, Attack that they uh, disrupted, which come to find oh, yeah, out yeah. never was going to really happen anyway. It was only conceptual stages. It was never really going to happen in the first place. He found out about uh, this latest information by watching Bush on TV yesterday and was not too happy about it. Anyway, a roadside bomb blast has killed two U.S. Marines near the western Anbar City province of uh, city of Fallujah today. In Baghdad, a car bomb exploded, killing at least four, wounding 21 mole. So the good news continues. It's a bloodbath, like Christiana Amanpour said. Oh, there's a Susan Smith. She's whimpering along. Presidential advice. Presidential advice. Oh, God. Get some real people in the Congress. Get some real people to take hold of the government and stop this wimping, uh, pussyfooting around for crying. God. We need the whiners on there with their macaroni and freaking cheese. Oh, guess, and speaking of uh, that... <laughs> Freaking this and freaking that. Guess who's out of the closet on here? We didn't even know about it. Howard! 
really? mean, maybe maybe Tom Cruise and uh, John Travolta and R. Kelly don't want to come out of the closet, but I'm, the rumor I'm hearing now is, hey, whether you live or Rogers guy. Right. I'm riding all day long, and sometimes it's on a horse. Like a broke-back cowboy. Rectum. I'm walking kind of funny, and it ain't from Rectum. I'm a homo on the range, I swear. Like a broke-back cowboy. You fairy. Save your money, okay? Go watch Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Anything. Go uh, hang yourself from the tea room in an airplane. By the way, we'll get to that story about that guy. He uh, was hung. He hanged himself. Bigger, oh, I okay. Steve says, have uh, Mary Tyler Moore show on the pool. Oh, jeez. Okay, have a great weekend, too, Steve. Back at you. Mary Tyler Moore show. Not for me. There was nobody on that show I liked, including her, including uh, Dick Van Dyke, including, uh, wasn't Rosemary on that show? Okay. Stick with the Hollywood Squares, Rosemary. Okay, that's more up um, up your alley, Sally. Maury Amsterdam, was he on that show, too, or was that the uh, Dick Van Dyke show? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Not for me. Here's yesterday's poll, 1,740 votes. What radio show do you listen to in the morning before 10 o'clock? Hank, 308, 17.7% for the humper. <laughs> All right. Air America, though, 236. That's pretty scary. None, 222. NPR, 190. Your buddy Phil Latzman. Is now, do you tell me he's on in the morning on NPR? That's right. Phil Latzman. Oh. Howard Stern on Sirius 165. And by the way, Pharrell was on with him lying through his teeth again. I had a six share and Neil Rogers had me. We had a 14. We were in the market. Yeah, one month and one trend you had a six share. For all. You had three months in the market. One was a six share. It was very good. One was like mediocre and the other month was a disaster. But uh, this guy talks more crap. I'm going to lie. We go to the market. I'm going to come kick your ass. If the audience had even the slightest inkling of the stuff that he pulled off, forget about on the air. And, you know, jeopardizing the license and stuff like getting us fined. But the stuff that went on off the air. You know what I'm talking about? I'm sure you do. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about. Including that one sales call where, like, uh, it's a miracle anybody walked out of there alive from the reports we got. Remember that deal? No. Nope. Yeah, you do. Yeah, maybe you want to talk to Joe uh, Bell about that on Monday. Howard Stern on Sirius 165, Joe Rose 135, Ron and Paul 116, Bob and Tom 113, almost even with Ron and Paul, and they're not even in the Dayton Broward market. How do you like that? That's either a tremendous tribute to them or a knock on Ron and Paul or both. But that's uh, quite an accomplishment. I don't care what that guy said yesterday. He's just uh, a loser. I like Bob and Tom, don't you? Yes, I do. So the fact is that they, you know, they're not uh, political uh, geniuses, okay? Big deal. They suck up. Other music stations, 67, no, too many and too bad. XM, 35. Oh, I can't wait to listen to Oprah on XM. WIOD, 35. All the right-wing propaganda all the time. Mike and Mike in the Morning, 33. I guess that's ESPN Radio. Call up Jim Sarney and see how come he didn't write about uh, that punk in his column today. What the hell's the guy's name? I don't even know what his name is anymore. Who? On ESPN Radio. Oh. <laughs> I'm asking Josh. You're supposed to know that. Which, Which guy? Is... Huh? Which guy? The guy in the afternoon that he's always raving about how great he is and we ought to have him on two to four uh, and that nobody ever heard of. See, you don't know. No speaking in Glaze Station 25. Howard Stern pirate broadcast, either on the uh, Internet or, huh? I said RMT. Right. 16. So you put those two together and you got like uh, over 10% of this audience listens to Stern in the morning still by hook or by crook or either paying for it or stealing it. Magic 102.714. Y 110. Mr. Ego, Steve Kane, five, which I, I smell a rat there. It was like two uh, all day long. And then I think Nick Lawrence voted three times. WFTL, five. Power 96, five. How do you like that? Aren't you impressed? Okay. WKPX, four. And WVUM, Solamente Uno, only one, because uh, who the hell would want to hear that anyway? And number two, I do. nobody even listens to us anyway. Is you that Evan Cohen, by the way? 
Who is it? Evan Cohn. Very good. Where'd you get that? Muddy Cohn? Yeah. So getting back to this piece of garbage movie. Now, I can't spoil the ending for it because I haven't watched the ending yet, but I don't. I, I really don't plan on it. I mean, if I get really, really bored and I want to, or maybe if I have insomnia and I want to fall asleep real fast, yeah, I'll slap that baby on her again. It's just, it, it's so bad. I'm not exaggerating. It's so bad that there, I, I was in disbelief. Because any, you know, you sit down, and you watch a movie, you put the disc in there. First of all, very bad copy, by the way. Well, but nevertheless, yeah, recorded from a nevertheless, screen, you know. Uh, and I'm, I'm waiting for something to happen, you know. And the movie starts out. And there's these two ranch hands. Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal, who was uh, very good in uh, Donnie Darko. Yes, and are. they drive up to the uh, trailer there. You know, here's the old uh, ranch uh, rancher's trailer there where they're going to, you know, a couple of ranch hands want to look and get some work. And Heath Ledger is standing outside the trailer waiting for the boss man to show up. And he's got his cowboy hat kind of over his head, and he's, like, uh, leaning up against the trailer. And then Jake Gyllenhaal drives up in his pickup truck, and he, like, Gets out of the truck and stands there, and kind of like his eye and Heath Ledger, like looking at him, like up and down, you know, like like that. Mm -hmm. Which I guess that's supposed to be a message there. Oh, Bruce says the honeymooners still made. Okay, I was going to put that on the honeymoon. And so, uh, and Stenton's time to a setting, and then it gets more boring from there. And then they get the job of being the sheep herders, you know. They're going up there in the uh, bareback mountain, and they're going to, like, uh, be living up there in the woods and uh, herding the sheep and bringing them all back alive and whatever that's all about. And we, so we see a lot of sheep. We see some uh, neat dogs in there. They're, like, uh, doing that sheep herding stuff that uh, them sheep dogs do. And uh, that's pretty much it. And they're sitting up there, and you see uh, Heath Ledger uh, bare-ass naked from the uh, backside, which, quite frankly, who cares? And then we see Jake Gyllenhaal, like, uh, washing his laundry, you know, there in the creek. Yep. And he's, like, squatting down uh, stark naked. And that's uh, that's that. And, and the whole thing is so ridiculous and so implausible because, like I said, there was not the slightest bit of affection or tenderness or warmth between the two of them. And all of a sudden, because it's cold outside one night, Heath Ledger's sleeping outside the tent and Jake's on the inside. And Jake says, get your ass in here. I guess he took him literally, although it was the other way around, it turned out. But, uh, and then uh, they're laying there under the covers, and Jake Gyllenhaal reaches back and grabs Heath Ledger's hand and puts it right down there uh, where the moon don't shine, Wra wraps it around, which I thought he was going to wrap the arm around him, but he just uh, stuck it right down, you know where. The front? And then, yeah, in the front. And then the next thing we know, uh, he's getting up and uh, uh, taking his pants down, and then Heath gets up and takes his pants down, and here we go, uh, you know what it is. I see. Heath's on the top and Jake's on the bottom. Got that? I got Which it. Is, that particular scene is more like a rape than it is anything else. Uh, it has nothing to do with affection or love or even, it's just more like a rape scene. It's the kind of thing that somebody uh, we miss so badly. <laughs> And then there's another scene where they're, like, uh, doing uh, some hanky-panky in the tent, and then uh, that's pretty much it. And then the summer ends, like I said, and uh, we see a sheep there got killed by, uh, you know, a wolf or whatever and ripped to pieces, a coyote. Maybe it was uh, one of Betsky's coyotes. And, uh, and then the summer ends, and they uh, go back down to the trailer. And meantime, the boss man has been looking with the binoculars and seeing something hanky-panky going on up there in the woods. And uh, they like, uh, well, I guess I'll see you around. Okay, well, I'm getting married, uh, uh, says Heath Ledger, and getting a hitch to Michelle Williams. I'm going to have her uh, crawling around on all fours, and, and that's it. That's it. I, I, and, and it just drags and drags, and you keep waiting for something interesting, for something, anything. Please, just please give me some entertainment. Please show me some reason why I should continue watching it. And they didn't, and so I didn't. I shut that baby right oh, down. Yeah. That's a relief. Oh, so please do your say. And if your wife and your daughter thought it was pretty good, man, you no, you ought to get that. them. We can, huh? I said they thought it was okay. No, it was not okay. Well, what do they know? It was it was not even close to okay. You see, they got sucked in by the hype. That's what it was. I imagine you thought because uh, well, I was going to watch it. That I might. No, that's it might not what I thought at my, all. Uh, well, taint working for me. I'll tell you what will work for you this weekend. The Emerald Coast, Florida's number one Asian gourmet buffet. That's a restaurant review uh, opinion, not just mine. Now, every weekend, every Friday through Sunday night, you can go there and really pig out. Enjoy Lobster Fest featuring Maine Lobster Surf Thermidor style. And every night at the Emerald Coast is Crab Fest featuring Alaskan Snow Crab Legs, Dungeness Crab, Jonah Stone Crabs. There is so much great food there, you'll have to waddle out. The menu still includes fresh oysters on a half shell and a sushi bar with over 30, About 30 man. different items. The Emerald Coast also serves juicy, delicious New York steaks cooked to order the way you love them in hand car prime rib. And on the weekends, for dessert, leave room for the Emerald Coast's famous 40-inch chocolate fountain. 
You can hand dip your own strawberries, marshmallows, other decadent treats, and be sure to check out their all-new all-you-can-eat sushi bar featuring sashimi, tuna tataki, over 20 different types of sushi rolls, and much more. Tuna tataki, taki. The Emerald Coast has three convenient locations to serve you. They're in Sunrise, Sunny Isles Beach, and Pembroke Pines. Reservations suggested if you want to have a real fantastic feast this weekend. Get the whole gang. To just take a whole bunch of strangers, too, and pig out at the Emerald Coast. Call 954-572-3822. This is Neil Rogers. This is 562 AM. Gordon Liddy, and they don't come any worse than Neil Rogers. From the makers of Brokeback Mountain comes an epic tale of forbidden love on the other side of the valley in Rainbow Reservation. <laughs> Why you cry, flying dove? Oh, flaming brown eyes, I fear you and your friend more than friends. What? I fear you, baby. No person. Never. Rising Longhorn been friends since boyhood. It's how you look at him. Well, how he well, look at you. Yeah. The purple feather, well, Birkenstock, well, the teepee decoration, well, and those yeah. long trip over mountains. Experience the prairie like never before as two Indian friends from rival tribes, the Jackagai and Lockerjaw tribes, spend nights alone in the wilderness in a teepee illuminated by the flickering campfire and serenaded by the sounds of nature. Oh, Longhorn. Oh, brown eye. Oh, good grief. I can no quit you. Movie critic Rex Reed raves. Who's your chief? Who's your chief? Rainbow Reservation. Hi, 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 hi. Coming soon to a theater near you. Oh, so downtown uh, Brownie Brown just said, I didn't know there was no people at the Superdome or at that convention center. You kidding me? Right. For the poll from Matt and Vero Beach, Law and Order. Okay. Okay. Well, Matt and Vero Beach, he must be the guy that called us yesterday and gave us a song to dance about uh, how bad Bob and Tom were, right? I mean, how many people can we have in Vero Beach? Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So we'll put it on there, Law and Order, but uh, with uh, some crapitation. Anyway, I'm watching this thing and I'm thinking to myself, I must have, uh, you must have sent me the wrong movie. Yeah, right. You must be funning me. So I just went on IMDb, and the funny part about this is that I started typing it in, you know, to uh, get the review of it. Uh huh. And I start writing bear, bear back, ass. and then, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't think of what the real name of the movie was no more, you know. Bear ass. So many bits. So here's what they give. Eight stars out of ten. Eight stars. I'm going to tell you, at least seven of those are a lie. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in All my life. All you got to do is uh, stick some faggery in there, and the critics just go nuts. Get out of here. A statement and a half. How many, how many stars did a Torch Song trilogy get with Harvey Firestein and Anne Bancroft? Huh? I don't know. Check it out. I don't want to. I'm afraid. And, and i got news for you. As marginal as that movie was, it sure as hell uh, beat, beat the crap out of this thing. At least Anne Bancroft was funny. I never saw that. And at least the adopted son was real hot. Anyway, but nevertheless. Uh, here, I want, I want to read you this. Uh, you know, they always put a user comment. Here, somebody gives it ten stars. Oh, some queen from Toronto, no less. Well, it wasn't this one. I was lucky enough to get a s ticket to the second screening of Bar uh, uh, Bear Ass Mountain at the Toronto International Film Festival. It was absolutely beautiful. From a gay man's perspective, which here, that could be just about anybody, the love story was both satisfying and heartbreaking. Heath Ledger gives the better performance of the two, but not by much. Probably important because he's the main character. Heath is note perfect. I didn't detect a false moment. Jake is also incredible, sweet, nuanced, and loving. He has the difficult part of being essentially the love interest rather than the main character. Once you see the ending, you'll understand why it was important for the audience to more closely uh, sympathize with Heath's character. Well, I didn't see the ending. And the subject matter is treated fairly and with compassion. Yeah, like the rape scene. The script was wonderfully structured. The portrayal of the wives is also fair and compassionate. I've never liked Michelle Williams more in a role than this one. She was the portrait of vulnerability, and Anne Hathaway was great in a limited role. Love the hair. Oh, love the hair. That's all I need to... Oh, God. All I can say to you is you get out of here. Screamer. Love the hair. <laughs> All right. Oh, my God. And you know what this shows to me? This shows how far back we've gone. The fact that in 2006, that a movie like this, when, when the other one, Making Love, was in 1982, 24 years ago, and here there's such a big hullabaloo about this, oh, it's a gay cowboy love story. Yeah, who whoopee-doo. I am so just blown away. God. WQAM, Hello. And hey, Neil? Yes. I think Brokeback would have been better with stuntmen. Sorry, can you explain that? No. And neither can he. 
WQAM, hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Have you guys seen uh, the Broke Back to the Future parody? No. It's on YouTube. You go on YouTube.com and type in Broke Back to the Future. It's really okay. funny. Well, I, I, it's got to be more entertaining than this movie. I'll tell you that. Did you see it? No, I've not seen it. Sorry. Please do not. Please save the money. <laughs> Give the money to a starving uh, Getsky out there on the street corner. All right. Take Good luck, pal. Up. Okay. Uh, I want to hear from somebody who actually saw it and liked it, which in this crowd is unlikely, that, you know, unless they're going to disguise their voice. Well, you know, promise that you'll be nice to them. You know, maybe they're scared. No. Well, of course, this this review here, well, the ending is, hey, I'm sure the ending is just very touching and wonderful. It's, this I, I heard it had a bad so... ending. That's what the, uh, huh? the the report from the women is, that it's got a unhappy ending. Oh, so... well, if the ending is worse than the rest of it, my God, somebody wow. ought to be murdered for making this flick. I mean, it is just so ponderous. And there go the sheep, and here come the sheep, and here go the uh, sheep dogs. And <laughs> I, I'm, I'm telling you. There, there's nothing going on. There is nothing there. And too many beans, you know. Oh, no more beans. I'm tired of beans. And they're heating up the can of beans. And, and then, and then, then he, the shoots, he shoots the, uh, what is it, a moose or an elk or whatever it is up there in the woods. He finally, he's got better aim than Jake, literally I and see. figuratively, right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's why he, well, uh -huh. I'm going to leave, yeah, I'm gonna leave that driver. one alone. But, uh, and then they got, they're eating, uh, they're slicing that baby up and they're cooking it and they're eating uh, moose, moose steaks or uh, elk or whatever that is. Oh, good God. This is just tragic. And then, like I said, the obligatory Mandish family scene there where he just beats the snot out of these two loudmouth, uh, foulmouth, redneck old uh, yahoos that are mouthing off when he's there with his wife and 85 daughters. It's just, it is just uh, pathetic. WQAM, hello. Not there. Mark it down, line one. WQAM, hello. How are you doing? Okay. Hey, Ted Bell. Ted Bell Steakhouse for Lauderdale. I'd like to send you guys over... Five six seven oh five sixty, pound five sixty in the Verizon and Singular Wireless line. WQAM, hello. I'm glad you're finally speaking. No, okay, I'm glad you finally are. Get, get your phone technique working a little bit better, okay? You sound like you're underwater, like a guppy. WQAM, hello. Neil. A sick puppy always sounds like a guppy. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Buenas. I wish I had uh, another ticket to go to the Super Bowl with you. I'd take you with me. Yeah. You would have been a good guy to go with. Yeah. And? Uh, Nelson just called you. Said you're a longtime friend from Detroit. I always call you. Longtime friend from Detroit? A young guy. Yeah. I don't know anybody from Detroit. Anybody I knew in Detroit don't live there no more. <laughs> have okay. a good day. Yeah, okay, you too. My longtime friend from Detroit. Boy, these people are really blah, blah, today. Oh, wow. Yeah. Woo wee, man. They must be doing a real good teriyaki sauce on it today. On their. Rectum. WQAM, hello. Hello? Yes. I'd like to talk to Neil, please. Speaking. Neil? Yes. Neil, can you move it along? I'm sick and tired of hearing about that movie. Yeah, move this along, okay? Move your ass, bitch. 5670560. Oh, See, they, they can't discuss this, and you want to know why, because it's too yeah. They can't even talk about it. This is the most ballyhooed ballyhoo ballyhoo piece of crap in, ever to I come down think, the pike. I don't ever. Think anybody saw it. And it's the biggest piece of garbage. Can you move it along? Yeah, move this, you silly ass bitch. WQAM, hello. QAM. Does the lipstick come out in the movie? WQAM, hello. I thought of you all through the movie. You played the... WQAM, hello. QAM. Hey, speak to Neil. Speaking. Speak to Neil. Speaking. Yeah. <laughs> This they is, are uh, coming special. unglued. You Woo. see what I mean? I think I got my thumb right on it today. They are coming unglued. I'm so I'm so glad you sent me that movie so I could tell uh, you know number one decide for myself how horrible it was and number two see the this is the ability of this crowd. I told you they couldn't uh, discuss it even like to say it was horrendous because then they'd have to admit they seen it. Discuss right? that? How about anything? And they can't? Huh? How about anything? Well, no. They, well, that that goes without saying. But this is an another category. WQAM. Hello. Hello. Oh, sorry, time's up. 20 to 11 at QAM. Hey, all you horse racing fans and poker fans, Pompano Park Racing and Poker is all the plunging action you could possibly want. Maybe even Betsky will be there this weekend. Located just a half mile from both I-95 and the Turnpike, Pompano Park is easy to get to. And best of all, Pompano Park offers you free admission and free general parking every day of your life. 
Live harness racing and our smoke-free poker room are open every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday like today. Poker gets underway at noon, goes on till midnight, and live racing gets underway nightly at 7.25 and a b.m. Every Monday night, it's Monday Madness in the Top of the Park restaurant on the sixth floor with two for $25 dinner specials, and don't miss out on our $1 nights on Wednesday when draft beer, sodas, hot dogs, and lots more, just a buck apiece starting at 6 p.m. Tonight, the top trotters in the country battle in the opening round of the $125,000 Mac LaBelle Trotting Series. Featured a track record holder, Hell of a Hush, unbeaten Dunkster, million-dollar winner Abby Rhodesy, and newcomer Justice Hall. And then tomorrow, it's the opening round of the $250,000 Isla Capri Pacing Series. Headlining the field is last year's winner, He Wants It All, North America's fastest pacer, Hop Singh, and Where the Money Went, who's going for his fifth win in a row. Pompano Park, lots of great racing action and poker as well, located just a block south of Atlantic Boulevard on Powerline Road, simulcasting every day and night, seven days a week. For the current racing schedule, 954-972-2000, or on the Wicked Web, pompanopark.com. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. Hey, everybody, I'm brown and brown. Accountable for everybody, brown and brown. As a human being, I'm a big disappointment. But I got a brown nose, and I knows where to point it. There was no rush to get them saved. They don't vote Republican anyway. I did everything I possibly can. To show my support for the Ku Klux Klan. Oh, what a job I had as the rector of FEMA. When I ain't much more than a weaselly schemer and a clueless son of a bitch. It's his gigs, brown nose in the ridge. It's his gigs, brown nose in the ridge. New Orleans is wiped out and gone. But W said I did one heck of a job. And it sure pays off. To be a crony and another white pasty Christian phony The National Guard is down there now With orders just to get the press out of town Everybody go home, there's nothing to see Everything here is pitchy pain Oh, the hurricane gave us a big easy For neocon social engineering Like a giant Republican squeegee Jesus Bush, our Lord and King. Praise Jesus Bush, our Lord and King. I don't believe compassion's what we lack. It serves the right to have less blacks. And you descendants who say it's a national disgrace. They shouldn't have been black in the first place. This is no time to play the blame game. Since we know that hurry pains are caused by gays who are not the right guy to all like Scotty McClellan and Carl Rove Oh, we're achieving the American right-wing dream To make everybody white like me And an ignorant son of a bitch Absolutely It's his job, brown nose and a rich Oh, how I miss spending my Arabian horses I'd rather do that than watch floating horses I'm a negligent murderer now I'll keep going down to keep my nose brown. I'm a negligent murderer now. But I'll keep going down to keep my nose brown. All right. 1046, 14 to 11 at QAM. Actor Franklin Cover. Neighbor Tom Willis to the Jeffersons dies at 77. Remember like Tom that? Willis? What about him? Dead. Yeah, it's just solid. Franklin Cover portrayed George and Louise Jefferson's white neighbor in the sitcom, which ran from 75 to 85. In the role, he was an interracial marriage with a black woman. What that was her name? Don't know. Oh, man. Publicist has covered out of pneumonia Sunday at the actor's home in Englewood, New Jersey, right across the uh, street from Tenafly. He'd been living there since December 2005 while recuperating from a heart condition. He was 77, but in show business for nearly seven, uh, six decades. His credits include the Jackie Gleason Show, All in the Family, Will and Grace, and ER. He also appeared in several films, including The Great Gatsby. About that uh, hockey player, Bill Gadsby. The uh, Stepford Wives in Wall Street. Okay, here's our poll today, which we haven't even got to yet, because that bitch called in and got everybody all whipped up about uh, Bear Ass Mountain. Roxy Roker. Could you move it along? Uh, oh, brother. How'd you like to horse whip that bitch? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I recognize the voice. Never had anything to say useful in 30 years. 644 votes, but then why should she be different from anybody That's else? Right. Six, because you had the right, uh, you know, that, that was the right response. Have they ever had anything to say about anything? Except, of course, Alien. Alien. 
Though you've seen every episode many times, which TV series will you never get tired of watching? We got the 644 votes. Seinfeld, 160. Oh, boy. Simpsons, 89. Star Trek, 78. All in the Family, 69. South Park, 61. MASH, 54. I Love Loosely, 25. Cheers, 23. Batman, 14. Hawaii, 5 12. Lawn Odor, 10. New York NYPD Blue, 10. Friends, 8. Sex in the City, 8. Curb Your Enthusiasm, 6. Mary Tyler Moore Show, 4. That show uh, really sucked. The Jeffersons, 4. Kojak, 4. Honeymooners, 3. And Cannon, 3. I voted for Batman. You probably thought I voted for Cannon because I like the fat detectives. But... No, I know you like Batman. Batman. How could you not enjoy Batman? 5670560. Oh, As we search for the perfect call today, boy, I got a pile here that you wouldn't believe, but... Once I start, there'll be no stopping me today. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Uh, I was sorry to hear about Mr. Willis dying, but his wife on the show, Rossi Roker, was actually married to a white man in real life, and her son is Lenny Kravitz. So really? Yeah. That's right. That is correct. Yes. Yeah, just a tidbit of information. I know. Excellent. You know. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, that's true. Of course, that's nothing to be proud of, Lenny Kravitz. Oh, brother. Get a haircut, Lenny. God. WQAM, hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, just want to let you know, I've got uh, Scott Farrell going on to the new Howard Stern Network as of today. No, he was on last night. Well, yeah, that's true. I already talked about this. Oh, excuse me. And the uh, fact that he lied through his teeth about the numbers he had in the market in this market, and he's full of crap as usual. Yeah, I thought you might have got a kick out of that little mention there. Uh, it didn't feel like what he was saying, right? No, he, he he's just a liar. Like Hank said, that when, when the guy first came to town, Hank said, uh, this guy's a total liar. He's always BSing about his ratings, and he kicked Howard's ass when he was down against him in New York. He's full of crap. He, the only ass he ever kicked was his own, right out the door of every place he's ever worked. Yeah, well, I still got to say, those crossovers between you and him were still some of the best radio I've heard. You guys were well, great. Thank God for that. Okay, we're going to extend them to like a half an hour, even though uh, George and Josh told me this morning we better cut those real short because they're killing us. Five six seven oh five sixty. Isn't that what you guys said? Oh, now you'll deny it. I know the way you guys operate. What? I'm sorry, Tom five sixty in the Verizon and Singular Wireless line. I'm just moving along. Okay, I'm moving. I'm plowing right on through here today, just like plowing them fields and uh, hurting them sheep. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, I, I really should encourage you to watch it. If you can, if you can stand about even half an hour. And then you'll understand what I'm talking about. It is just so. Well, I'm always, uh, you know, fast forward through oh. the diary there. No, well, you don't even, you'll never get that far. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil Gott. Yes, sir. Um, just things. Wanted to see if you had any idea when um, uh, Poppin' Up Park was going to have the actual slot machine test. Uh, about June, I think. Okay. And I uh, wanted to say what a commentary it is on this area that uh, congratulations on 30 years and you're celebrating it by being uh, up in uh, Canada. Good for you. Yes, sir. Thank Good you up. so much. Okay. See you around, eh? Oh, yeah, I wouldn't, uh, I mean, just listen to these calls we had here in the first hour. That, that's what South Florida's on. It's not me. It's not this show. It's not this station. It's just It's just what it is. That, that's what you got. What you hear is what you got. Make no mistake about it. There is no doubt about that. That That's what you have. These are people who are incapable of feeling any, well, you know, and it's like a chicken and the egg question. Were they always that way, or did it happen to them when they got to South Florida? Of course, a lot of them have always been there. So, or maybe it rubbed off on them, you know? Right. It maybe does, all like, the hostile like... uh, New Yorkers or the hysterical Cubanos. Right. Or, well, there's always some excuse for people behaving the way they do and acting antisocial and just being a bunch of blathering idiots. Blah, 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 like that. You can't help it. The longer you're here, the more you become one of them. Is that what it is? I can feel it. Well, what did I, didn't I tell you that after I was here a mm -hmm. short period of time? That the more you're around polite people and friendly people, right. the more you become like them. And mm -hmm. you, like, hold the door open for people and you tend to That's be more right. considerate. And when you're around nasty, hostile people, it tends to make you nasty and hostile and That's suspicious right. and, ah, what do you want? You know, that kind of crap. Well, that's a good reason to get the hell out of there. WQAM, hello. Hey, it's uh, your good buddy in Akron. How you doing, Pally? Okay, Pally. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what time is uh, Pharrell on? I haven't got any idea. How big is his package? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. This thing here. About the size of your brain, like a ball bearing. Five, six, seven. My buddy in Akron and my good buddy in Detroit. I got. I never knew I had so many buddies out there. What's your uh, good buddy from Guam gonna call? Oh, and my good buddy from uh, Torino is gonna be calling this hour in honor of the Olympics. <laughs> w, w Q A M. Hello. Hey Neil. Yes, sir. Get with it, man. Lenny Kravitz has had short hair for the past three or four years. Well, thank God for that, man. See, I told you. I told that guy to get a haircut, and he finally listened to me. <laughs> All right. Yeah, good. I don't care about Lenny Kravitz. Couldn't sing his right about paper sack. WQAM, hello. 
Uncle Neil, how are you? Pretty good. I got one for your pool, uh, your pole, rather. <laughs> uh, Beverly pole. Hillbillies. Beverly Hillbillies, now we're talking. That's right up Jersey right. Valley. You bet. That show has the best one-liners you'll ever hear. Yeah, there's a one-liner. I'll take your word for it, believe me. Uh, also, um, there's no gay cowboys. Yeah, okay. Make sure you got your ears on now, buddy. You got your ears on? I have four of them. Oh, there's Samuel, uh, Senator Akaka from Hawaii. Can we say that? Your response. Kaka. As undersecretary to keep Secretary Schertz off informed, though. Oh, do you hear what, the way he said that? I think we should have dumped that. Five, six, seven. <laughs> oh, he said he was walking around with his shirt off. Well, you know, it was uh, humid and a lot of skeeters and stuff in New Orleans he's talking about. A lot of people walking around with their shirts off. And uh, they made an interesting point yesterday, which I never really thought of because I'm very, very slow and old. But uh, the fact that all these thousands and thousands of chocolate folks are going to be, like, staying in Texas now. See, Texas is going so overwhelmingly Republican that several thousand extra Democratic votes aren't going to change anything in the statewide elections. Mm -hmm. But in Louisiana, where they already have one of the very few southern states like Florida with one Democratic senator, uh, it's going to change a lot. See, they can get a lot more good old uh, rednecks in there. Good old more Republicans. So they're, they're not too anxious to let all them schleppers rebuild their homes. They'd like to have them stay in Texas. WQAM, hello. Yeah, I want to talk to Neil. Speaking. Neil Rogers. Th that's me. That's my name. Hey, can you, uh, Neil, one more. You made your favor, Neil. Can you use all your popularity, all your power to make sure we're not watching Gloria Stefan during the uh, Super Bowl halftime show? I'm going to Detroit to get together with my good buddy. I'm going Woo! to uh, yeah, the Super Bowl this year. Not that these folks are a little bit slow. Come to QAM. Hello. Hello. Can I speak to Neil? Speaking. Neil, what's happening, pal? Listen, i got a quick question for you. Yeah. I just got back in the country from Greece, mm -hmm. and I was looking for Mo Howard David on the radio this morning. Well, you what won't happened? find him. No, no Mo. What happened? What do you mean, what happened? This contract was ending in March, and they uh, paid him two months and said, no Mo. No, 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 no. He said, okay, no Mo. So, are you going to be going to the mornings now? What What are you talking about? Oh, I just want to know if you're going to go well, to the morning. Why would I be going to... Well, what is his not being here have to do with me? He was not in the morning anyway. He was on from 2 to 4, Mo. Well, I thought they'd shift the whole thing up at 560 now. Yeah. Like they normally do. Well, they, they're not moving this kid, I'll tell you that. All you're right. not getting up in the morning for these grave robbers. you got to be dreaming. Well, I wish I couldn't get up in the morning for my grave robbers, but that's a whole different story. Well, All right, I'm out of material with Neil. Okay, later. that sounds like it. Five six seven oh five sixty. What what is this guy talking yeah, about? Just got back from today, Greece, yeah. huh? It's a special day today, I think. I think all the aroma, all that pollution, and all that schmutz there in Greece affected that guy's mind. What he's got left of it, Jesus! All the places. I'd rather go to like um, uh, Bangladesh than to Greece. You know? I'm God, in Bangladesh. I just can't even imagine going. Oh yeah, but it's so nice there in these uh, those islands there. All the uh, all the queens go to the uh, island. The, well, that's well, they like that Greek thing, you know? Mykonos. 674 votes on the poll. Seinfeld, 165. I'm not going to read the results. I'm going to be sucked into doing that again. How's that lineup today for this last guy who's been out of town and has no idea what's going on? Well, guess what? Neither do we. How do you like that? Do, 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 we do, have do, not, do. no idea. A two to four is revolving dough because there ain't no mo mo. This is the Neil Rogers Show. <laughs> this is your brain. <laughs> Any questions? Hey. It's Howard. Howard David. Welcome back to the Mo Howard David Show, where we're chock full of zany, but good, clean family fun. <laughs> I'm here, and you're there. That's a tight of phrase, huh? You know that pipe smoking thing's rape is funny? Is that funny, huh? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Since when is gang rape funny? What do you require of me? I require you drop your pants. Well, now, see here. Right now. Well, 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 I want those pants drop them down you. there. Hey. You like it? Hey, get your hands up. Get out of there. Get up in the bed. That's what you want. Don't touch my delicates. I'm tender. Why does everybody want to rape me? Why? Because we think it's funny. That's why. Don't put it there. Get your ass out of that sink. i got to wash these eggs off my hands. What are you, some kind of fairy? I'm not a queen. What do you know about being queer, you moron? I've been right enough to know the difference. We're supposed to be talking about sports here. This is sports radio over here. We love men. Yeah. From this point on, I demand 
to get paid by the Dudoy. Yeah. Now, we're going to make something out of this crepe paper, you understand? You. Then maybe later I'll pull the link sausages out of my pants, okay? <laughs> okay. It's a joke, you moron. Ah. Oh, no. There's Martians in my pants. Oops. <laughs> Hello, Warden. How can I help you? Well, you see, Warden, yes? I keep getting raped. D -d 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 I'll look into it right away. Thanks, Warden. It's about time, somebody. But now drop your pad. Huh? I said drop your pad. There isn't some old candle. Give you something to do while you're watching golf. Like uh, pouring the uh, hot liquid in your eye. Uh, like this. Ah, now look what you made me do. God, take your pants on. Now, pin wide. You want to walk my show? You'll do as you're told. Now, get over here. Yeah, that's right. Now, come here. Now, get over there. Come here. Now, come here. Come over here. Not there. Over here. Oh. Stole the pizza? No, I did not steal no pizza. Stole the pizza? Now, see here. I ain't no pie burglar. Stole the pizza? I did not steal the pizza. The... I only had one slice. Put your head close to the glass door. See if anybody's inside. Okay. No. Closer. Closer? A little closer. Like this. Like this. <laughs> oh, you're a tough guy, huh? Why, I ought to... <laughs> now, see here. <laughs> all right, all right, you supplicant. Step aside. I'm the new Pope, see? I stand before you now. <laughs> Let me bless you, my son. The <laughs> boy. The boy. The boy. Well, perhaps you'll garner much under my tutelage. I don't want to look for that tutelage. Yeah. I don't want your tutelage over me. They'll <laughs> <laughs> never find me in. <laughs> of course, it's more important that I outlive you. Why, I'll have you know. <laughs> I go home now. Oh, I sure. Watch out for Mr. Whipple. Squeeze. Don't squeeze. Forget about it. That's what I say. And kiss my ass. Yeah, just a second. Am I dreaming or what? Oh, for just a second, I thought that, that was Arlen Spectre. I thought he's been wearing a hairpiece oh. the last couple of weeks. It's not. Scared the crap out of me. Well, Brownie Brown is, but he's uh, up on, uh, you know, talking crap. Here's a fact that says I agree with you 100% about Brokeback Mountain. As a gay man, gay, I thought it was going crazy because everybody around me, especially the straight people, is bought into the hype. What a boring piece of garbage. The movie that should really get attention is Good Night and Good Luck, which uh, is going to be out on DVD in two, three weeks. I'm going to be the first one to get it. But it cuts too close to home because it says that the people who run TV and movies are spineless cowards, even when it comes to alcoholic senators who are in the closet, like Joe McCarthy. Well said. The original Mission Impossible is on every week. out here. never get tired of that. That's a good one for our full day, Mission Impossible. As opposed right. to those awful movies. Hey, Tommy. You fairy. With Tommy Cruz. Let's see. Could you put Monty Python's Flying Circus on your pole? That's good. Are they still running sure. those on PBS? Uh, I guess. Okay. Well, there you go. Every Monty Python's. Idea. Also, can you please play Jihad Rock? Ah, I just got through playing that the other day, right, for the first time in a long time. Yeah. I'll think long. about it. It's long, though. It is. The Andy Griffith Show. It says, they show this on educational television in the South, says John in Columbia. And, of course, they probably get a good education from that. Yeah, you're not just whistling Dixie, baby, I'll tell you. Andy Griffith Show. We got these? Are we putting these on there, or am I just reading these yes, for uh, kill some time? A little of both. Oh. WQAM, hello. I got one for your poll, Neil. Okay. Andy Griffith. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that must have been my good friend from Penyan, New York. Wow. Of course, I had never been there, but nevertheless, i got so many friends. WQAM, hello. That's one of the better ones we had today. WQAM, hello. QAM. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Sopranos. What is it? Sopranos. 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 Okay, he's mumbling. Okay, the Sopranos. Uh, no, okay, Sopranos. Yeah, speak up, Pally, speak up. Stand up and be a real man, okay? Sopranos, articulate, gesticulate, do something, man. The Sopranos. Ain't never seen one. Although I still think somewhere I got that uh, VHS, the tape that Book of Brian put together, with the 80,000 best episodes. Plus, it's on up here like every five minutes. Right, and you tell me it's, uh, I should see it. I'm not going to watch Sopranos? 
I don't want to see a bunch no, of there's weirdos. No, there's no point now. It was great, and it uh, the last. Well, I got all the old ones there on that VHS. Maybe right. when I go home, I'll recover that thing. We'll probably too bad. Not. WQA, QAM, hello. Hey, good morning, Pally. I got a show little thing for your poll. Yeah. Uh, Faulty Towers. Faulty Towers. F A W L T Y. Okay. Take, take care, buddy. Okay, I don't want to see that. Faulty. You know how to spell that, Josh? F A W L T Y. That's why I spelled, yeah, spelled yes, it for you. Yes, he does. He's over there typing away right now. Great. Though you've seen every episode many times, what TV series would you never get tired of watching? That's our pool today. Let's get about 4,000 on there. Although, I'm serious. i got to like start diving into this pool. And the greatest thing I discovered ever, ever. Yeah. Well, maybe not the greatest thing, but one of them. Top five. Zillow.com. Yeah, we were both on it last night. How do you like we that? We were both on it last night. Zillow.com launched Wednesday the latest rage in residential real estate. Customers clogged the free website with more than 300,000 page views from 3 o'clock in the morning till 10 a.m., temporarily disabling it. The site allows people to find estimates of home values almost anywhere in the nation. They can also compare fluctuations with nearby properties and chart value changes over 30 days. About 30, man. Or one, five, or ten years. The Seattle-based startup, which has information on more than 60 million homes, bases estimates on local public records, sales histories, and prices of comparable homes. Other free websites, such as homevalues.com, require users to register before getting information, but Zillow users don't have to do anything. The site was started by Rich Barton, whose Expedia.com entered the careers of many a travel agent. Should real estate agents also be worried? The folks at Zillow say no. It's really designed to give you a starting point. If you're not feeling well, you can enter your symptoms and see what you may have. It's not designed to take the place of going to the doctor. See that? I see it. Zillow, which plans to make money by selling advertising, lets home buyers educate themselves before contacting the agent. You just go on there, and not only will it tell you how much, you just put in your street address and your zip code. Don't even have right. to put the city. And it takes you right to a, a photo of your hood. Uh huh. And it shows your house and the ones all around it, and it gives you the value like today, which is kind of shocking, by the way, mm -hmm. but pretty exciting. And uh, values of all the homes around you and anywhere you want to look. And you can go on that graph. I don't know how much you played around with it. And the uh, Zillow, too. Yeah. But you can compare the property value and the rate that it's increasing compared to uh, other places in your city and in, uh, right. and in America. Yeah, and like you can see how rate. much it went up. Even in the last week, how much it went up, which is shocking to me. I just I, I don't understand why. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. I think it's I time to sell. Works. Here's a fax that says, uh, saw Kinsey last night. Careful how you read that. Oh. Did you see the guy with a special talent? I saw that. I see. I saw that part. I saw half that movie I already told you. He uh, completed the full act. We don't want to... Uh, the full Joyce act in ten seconds. Yeah, twice as long as I need. Uh, what do you think of that? I didn't see Kinsey. It looked interesting. I need to start, uh, like, watch it from the beginning, because I saw half of it, but not from the beginning, mm -hmm. and I didn't make it all. Well, I'll tell you what. Watch the first half of Brokeback, and then watch the last half of oh. Kinsey. Believe me, you do not want to see this. I'm, I'm begging you. Do not even think about it. All right, I won't. WQAM, Hello. Line one, mark it down. QAM, hello. Neil, how you doing? Okay. Uh, before I get to the need of my call for the poll, Family Guy. Yeah. F family Guy, okay. Oh, you don't watch Family Guy? No. Okay, here we go. Maybe you're a rock star again because everybody hates my guy. You don't, okay, so you were in the industry. You are on a roll. You were really starting to happen. And I think I left... Well, how come, how come we lost the... Uh, I mean, I thought oh, he was going to play yeah. something interesting. And then click, and away it goes. Well, that was interesting. Just staring with Pharrell. What's got Pharrell? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, the whole, the whole same old stuff, you know. I'll take your children. I'll sell them to some Haitians. Wah, 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 wah. Or ah, wah, there we go. Ah, 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 yeah, you know what I ah, often said about talking yourself into something? You, you, you can talk a good game, but you can't talk yourself into ratings or into having an audience like the guys across the street. You can create all the hoopla and make a lot of noise. Ah, you know, and it doesn't accomplish anything. You know? Just like all the crap he used to talk about kicking Stern's ass when they were out against each other in New York. I'll say it again. Never even came close. Not even close. WQAM, hello. I'll go near our way, Mark sir. it down. Line one work this time. Yes, sir. It's amazing to me. I have to, all these people that listen to you and they call, and you would think that they hear everyone else talk to you directly, and they still ask for you. Yeah. Well, they're stupid. Can't you tell by hearing what they're saying? Absolutely. Okay. Hey, look, I have a um, little to help you out with your poll. Yes. Uh, I love Lucy show. It's already on there. Oh, I apologize. It just That's why I said votes. Hey. Yeah. I was just saying, have a good day, Uncle Neil. Oh, okay. 
Five, six, seven. <laughs> it is a great day. Hey, listen, this is, uh, this is as good as it gets. I'm you telling know that you. I'm being sarcastic. It, it is a great day. These are, especially that bitch that called in there, that the, one of your people again. Can you move it along? Sour, nasty. Yeah, can you move it along? Can move you along? Okay, honey, right back on a rubber raft. Send you to La Republica Dominicana. All those poor schleppers got enough problems of their own. Blind date. Says uh, somebody on a fax. Okay. Here. Blind date. Okay, I've seen that a couple of times. It was uh, weak. It was all right. But never, and I see on that kind of a show, why would you want to see it again? Oh, well, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I rate car buyer kills himself on plane. We had the story yesterday, but we want a little more information about. And this this story by David O'Valley. You know, you're an idiot, David. And of course, the fact you work at the Herald that speaks for itself. What a jackass. He was a mild-mannered former rock band crew member who spent his past four years ha happily running a performing arts center in North Miami Beach. Then last week, Jerry Georgettis became, uh, became to some a consumer hero when he plowed his new Ford Escape into a dealership Saturday, then torched about a dozen cars, all police said, because he felt he got a bad deal. He, he became a consumer hero? Is that the way we looked upon him? Well, that's not what I was thinking. But yeah, no, I was sure. thinking a uh, crazy person is what yeah. I was thinking. He's, his sudden notoriety turned tragic when police reported Thursday that Georgettis had committed suicide the day before, hanging himself inside a bathroom aboard a flight bound from a Virginia suburb to Washington to L.A. Oh, maybe he was in uh, Norfolk. Maybe he was uh, there with the Marlins. Where? Norfolk, Virginia. Oh. That's where the Marlins are threatening to go next. And then they're going to go to Akron, and then they're going to go to Penyan. Friends say they were baffled about his death in the event last week that put George Edison in the headlines across the country. In all honesty, I don't know anyone more stable than Jerry who was not depressed at his best friend, musician Billy Yeager. I was at his house for Christmas. We played golf the next day. His body was discovered inside the lavatory about 4.20 p.m. aboard United Flight 209 after people noticed he'd been in there too long. Attendants asked him off duty Secret Service agent to break down the door. George Edison's 5-foot-9-inch body dangled from a piece of his own clothing. He was hung. The flight was diverted to Denver Quick International, piece. where George Edis was taken away local hospital and pronounced dead. Now, wait till you hear this paragraph. This is what really frosts my ass. After the leadership incident, George Edis was something of a momentary folk legend. A Spanish-language newspaper columnist praised him for sticking it to the man. He became a hero on AM talk radio. He told his best friend, a cop on the scene, even jokingly said he wished he could do the same thing. Hmm. Okay. Do you, is this the take that any rational person had on that in incident? You get a bad deal, and so you drive your, the vehicle through the uh, showroom window and jeopardize the life of the people inside and set cars on fire and uh, act like a crazy person? And then hang yourself in a plane? All of these, well, that's uh, all of these things. Nice going, David O'Valley, whoever you are. Some stringer for the Herald, you know, getting paid three bucks a column. And well worth it at uh, ten a tenth of the price. Speaking of that, before the break, federal authorities said they found what they believe is a human skull in a passenger's luggage at Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport yesterday. Boy, a lot of strange stuff goes on at that Fort yeah. Lauderdale, Lauderdale Airport. Is it illegal to uh, travel, travel with bones now? The woman was on Lynx International Airlines Flight 203 from Haiti and said the skull is part of her uh, religion, Santeria. Ask Bill Shatner if it's illegal to travel with bones. Customs officials were examining her luggage when they found it. FBI officials said the skull had dirt around it. Oh, that's unusual. You dirty skull. The Broward County Medical Examiner's Office ins is inspecting the skull to try to determine its origin. Authorities took the woman into custody, but she hasn't been arrested. They're unable to say if any law has been broken. Santeria is an African-based religion similar to voodoo, which combines the worship of traditional Yoruban deities with the worship of Roman, Roman Catholic saints. All a bunch of Hazarai. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. Hurricanes basketball. Sunday night, the Canes take on the defending champion, North Carolina Tar Heels, at the Bank United Center. Hurricanes warm-up starts our coverage at 7 p.m. If you can see the Canes, man, you keep your best out right now. Right 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 right. Watch the bare ass mountain instead. It's Friday, you bastard. Tired of the same old restaurants? Try the Cafeteria Santeria of Hialeah. How much is that doggy on the menu? The one with the barbecue tail. How much is that doggy on the menu? 
I'm sure glad the chef's out of jail. That's right. No matter what the weather's like outside, it's always raining cats and dogs at the Cafeteria Santeria of Hialeah. We'll make your stomach stop growling and make your neighbor's pit bull stop doing the same thing. Talk about delicious. Mmm, mmm. Your meal is always fresh. We kill it right on the premises. For a heavenly meal at a sacrifice price, it's the Cafeteria Santeria. Try it once. You'll eat there religiously. How much is that doggy on the menu? The one that is fried in deep fat. Please bring me that doggy on the menu. And bring a side order of cat. Walk, run, or catch a greyhound for the Cafeteria Santeria of Hialeah, where we give new meaning to the word pet food. I'm going to tell you right now, mark this down, 11-18, Friday, February the 10th. As long as there's a Democratic Party, fascism will always be alive and well in America. Amen. These are the biggest bunch of wimps. Frank Lautenberg, who I thought had a pair of balls, a Democrat from New Jersey, he's on there uh, supposedly interrogating Brownie Brown, and he goes through this long song to dance about, well, uh, you know, I was in WW2. We weren't always able to protect everybody, and you're not here to be the uh, uh, scapegoat du jour for uh, anybody else, and uh, you were trying your hardest, and blah, 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 blah. Oh, well, thank you, Senator. Uh, and it's just a suck fest, that's all. Forgetting about the fact that this man had absolutely no experience, was totally unqualified. It was another one of these plum jobs given to another crony. That's all it was. And people's lives were at stake. While this guy was pretending he didn't know there was anybody in the convention center and the yada, 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 and more worried about what kind of, you know, where he was going to have dinner and what kind of shirt he was wearing and his haircut and how he was going to look and all this other BS. Totally, completely unqualified. And the Democratic Party continued being the biggest bunch of wimps and wusses. You can blame all the fascists to all you want. But there, there's no barrier. There's nobody stopping them. Oh, well, you've seen every episode many times. Which TV series will you never get tired of watching? Seinfeld 178. We got 745 on here. We're going to do 1,000 again today. And Josh is pretty pleased and proud. I am. Simpsons 101. Star Trek 88. All in the Family 76. South Park 67. And they're still in the closet. MASH 58. I Love Loosely 28. Cheers 26. Hawaii 5015. Batman, 14. Law and Order, 13. NYPD Blue, 13. Kirby and Enthusiasm, 12. Friends, 12. Honeymooners, 9. Sex and the City, 9. Mary Tyler Moore Show, 5. Jefferson's, 5. Even though, uh, what's his name, died. He still only got 5. No sympathy votes. See, no, uh, no empathy, man, from this audience. No, 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 no. nothing. Cold. Cold as ice. Bastards. Kojak, 4. Family Guy, 3. The Sopranos, 3. Cannon, 3. He's dead, too. William Conrad. Do they care? No. Faulty Towers 2, Andy Griffith Show 2, Monty Python's Flying Circus 2, One for Blind Date, Mission Impossible, and The Beverly Hillbillies. All right. That's what we got so far. Vice President Dick Cheney's former chief of staff, Scooter Libby, testified to a federal grand jury that he had been authorized by Cheney and other White House superiors in the summer of 2003 to disclose classified information to journalists to defend the Bush administration's use of pre-war intelligence in making the case to go to war with Iraq according to attorneys familiar with the matter, and to court records. Libby specifically claimed that in one instance he had been authorized to divulge portions of a then still highly classified national intelligence estimate regarding Saddam Hussein's purported efforts to develop nuclear weapons, according to correspondence recently filed in court by in federal court by Special Prosecutor Patrick J. Fitzgerald. No relation to Ella. Beyond what was stated in the court paper, say people with first-hand knowledge of the matter, Libby also indicated what he will offer as a broad defense during his upcoming criminal trial, that Vice President Cheney and other senior Bush administration officials had earlier encouraged and, author encouraged and authorized him to share classified information with journalists to build public support for going to war. Let me just read that again. That Vice President Cheney and other senior Bush administration officials had earlier encouraged and authorized him to share classified information with journalists to build public support for going to war. Later, after the war began in 2003, Cheney authorized Libby to release additional classified information, including details of the NIE, to defend the administration's use of pre-war intelligence in making the case for war. How do you like that? It's a very long story. It's on our website. I'm sure it's on there right now as I speak, is it not? Yeah. Yes. I mean, I don't want to read all these articles here one after the other about Bush being a total liar, but I will anyway. Democrats don't want to do anything about it, so, uh, you know, why should I care, right? Pathetic. Just pathetic. Right. Tragic. 
If you could hear that Lautenberg thing, you'd, I don't know what you ate already this morning, but I'm going to tell you, it would all be on the table there right in front of you right now. It would have come right back up <laughs> for, for an encore, for a sitting ovation. I mean, how could anybody kiss this man's ass when, uh, it, admittedly, he hadn't got a clue? Hasn't got a clue. As a matter of fact, I should probably uh, skip ahead of this other one here. In the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, Bush administration officials said they had been caught by surprise when they were told on Tuesday, August 30th, About 30, man. that a levee had broken, allowing floodwaters to engulf New Orleans. But, see, here's that big but. Rectum. Always sticking its nose in there. Congressional investigators have now learned that an eyewitness account of the flooding from federal emergency officials reached the Homeland Security Department's headquarters starting at 9.27 p.m. the night before in the White House itself at midnight. The FEMA official, Marty Bahamande, first heard of a major levy breach Monday morning. By late Monday afternoon, Mr. Bahamande had hitched a ride on a Coast Guard helicopter over the breach at the 17th Street Canal to confirm the extensive flooding. He then telephoned his report to FEMA headquarters in Washington, which notified the Homeland Security Department. FYI from FEMA said an email message from the agency's public affairs staff describing the helicopter flight sent Monday night at 9.27 p.m. to the Chief of Staff of Homeland Security Secretary Michael Chertoff, Mickey Chertoff, and recently unearthed by investigators. Conditions, the message said, are far more serious than media reports are currently reflecting, finding extensive flooding and more stranded people than they had thought, also a number of fires. Mickey Brown, downtown Brownie Brown, who was the director of FEMA until he resigned under pressure February 12th, uh, September 12th, said in a telephone interview yesterday that he personally notified the White House of the news that night, though he declined to identify the official he spoke to. White House officials have confirmed to congressional investigators that the report of the levy break arrived there at midnight, and Trent Duffy, the White House spokesman, acknowledged as much in an interview this week, though he said it was surrounded with conflicting reports. But the alert didn't seem to register. Even the next morning, El Presidente... Alfred E. Newman, Jr., on vacation in Texas, was feeling relieved that New Orleans had dodged the bullet, as he later recalled. Mr. Chertoff, similarly confident, flew Tuesday to Atlanta for a briefing on avian flu. With power out from high winds and movement limited, even news reporters in New Orleans remained unaware of the full extent of the levee breaches until Tuesday. The federal government let out a sigh of relief when, in fact, it should have been sounding an all-hands-on-deck alarm, the investigators have discovered. The chain of events, along with dozens of other critical flashpoints in the Hurricane Katrina saga, has for the first time been laid out in detail following five months of work by two congressional committees that have assembled nearly 800,000 pages of documents, testimony and interviews from more than 250 witnesses. Investigators now have the documentation to pinpoint some of the fundamental errors and oversights that combined to produce what is universally agreed to be a flawed government response to the worst natural disaster in modern American history. On Friday, Mr. Brown is, uh, well, we know he's a uh, butter beep, butter boop, and they're sucking his uh, butt. There is no question in my mind at the highest levels of the White House, they understood how grave the situation, Mr. Brown said in the interview. The problem, he said, was the handicapping of FEMA when it was turned into a division of Homeland Security in 2003. The real story is with this new structure, he said. Why weren't more things done? Or what prevented or delayed Mike Brown from being able to do what he would do and would have done and do in any other disaster? Right, part of it being that he was totally unqualified and incompetent. That's part of it. But now he's covering his own ass, and, uh, and then maybe that's a good thing. Maybe he's going to put their ass out there on the line where it belongs. And the Democrats are going to say, well, we know the president wouldn't intentionally let anybody drown or, uh, yeah, anyway. Right? Right, yeah, right. He'd hold their head under. <laughs> oh. He wouldn't let them. He'd help Especially them. all them chocolate people there who don't vote for uh, Republicans anyway. God. 5670560, oh, pound 560 in the Verizon Singular Wireless. I'll just intersperse these 800 stories I got about the Bush people being a bunch of liars. Not that we don't already know that. And the Democrats being a bunch of uh, sissies. WQAM, hello. Phil. Yes, sir. How you doing? All right. You know, Neil, there's nothing. There's no difference between these two parties, and it's mm -hmm. all political theater they're showing us. Yeah, it's all a bunch of crap. Nothing's going to happen till maybe four or five years down the road when we go through a depression, and then a third party is going to come out, and then the Democrats are going to block that third party. They're both worthless, and we're in big trouble. Well said. I'll, I'll, I'll wish you best of luck up here. I'll say a prayer for you. Thank you. Okay, I'll wave at you across the uh, Ambassador Bridge next time I'm in Detroit with my good friend at the Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, man, I don't know, I don't know what they're uh, smoking today, but you sure got left out. Um, hey, I'm right I'm here. I'm talking about this guy. I'm talking about that first hour. Nice Green Acre is funny as Schmidt, says Jeff. Okay, Jeff, we'll thank you. Put it on there for you, Jeff. Let's get that on there right away. <laughs> don't get porky about it. 
Well, there's Jew Lieberman speaking of getting porky. Senator, though, I'm not really taking a different position. I always wanted to answer the question. And we're looking at new videotape. Yeah, oh, yeah. We, we don't know. Oh, who's that? What are we looking at videotape of? What's that? Is uh, somebody... Oh, there's uh, probably your president's getting on. Yeah. Giving Air a, Force uh, One. Speech to the House Republican Conference. And I'm sure we'll have to preempt uh, seeing these hearings on Katrina with, uh, you know, some more propaganda for your president because that, he's got his own show now every day. Whatever time he wants. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. Every Wednesday at 3.30, talk NBA and Miami Heat basketball with The Voice, Eric Reed, exclusively on Sports Radio 560 QAM. Neil Gott. He takes the thing up and digs it deep. Rectum. Into a nostril for something green. Oh, she's a nose picker. She's digging down. Don't flick it at me. Uh, her thing is long. Now I say she's a no picker. It's digging deep. Okay. Okay. It's time to run. Now I say she's a no picker. Give me the free. She's going to make me sick. I can't believe it. Dig it, girl. Go ahead. Dig it. It's on a sleeve. It's going to fill. You know it's going to I'm going to heal. Dig it, girl. You know it's going to heal. I'm going to heal. Dig it, girl. Go ahead. Her thing is long. Now I say she's a no picker. Gay cowboys, I don't believe that. That's just uh, too much horse on around. Yeah, that'd be me. like saying gay sailors. I mean, right, really. it's ridiculous. 1132 at 560 WQM is part of that agenda again, man, that uh, left-wing agenda, that homosexual communist agenda. You know what I'm saying? Incredibly. We're going to move it along, though. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the Verizon Singular Wireless Line. Curtis at 2, Mad Dog from Gatsby's and Davy at 4, Len and Troy, Lenny uh, Kravitz and Troy uh, Aikman, 7 o'clock tonight, Eddie K at 10 o'clock. WQAM, hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Can you do me a big favor? Maybe. Probably but not. <laughs> play the Jihad or Rock for me, no. Mike? No. See, he sent the facts in. That wasn't no, enough. No. Okay. No. Now, now he's got to call in and start it. you still got a squeaky, whiny voice and get a life, okay? Maybe if he sends a letter. Yeah, send us a certified letter, okay, and then we'll consider it. We'll pass it by the committee. George will take it up with Joe Bell at his big lunch on Monday, see if Joe approves. Five, six, and then you will call uh, Joyce. And she'll say? No. No. WQ, WQAM, hello. Hey, um, I just need to know the website you were talking about earlier. It's called Zillow.com. Zillow. Oh, it's, uh, that's, what is it again? Zillow. Zillow. Like, Z-I-L-L-O-W.com. Like it's pillow. the best thing you, what is it? Like pillow, but with Yeah, pillow Zillow. Z-I-L-L-O-W.com. All right. It's great. Thank you very much. You bet. It is so interesting, man. It's uh, enough to make you want to pee in your pants. It's just, I can't believe it. I mean, you, you just punch in. Here it is right here, Zillow.com. Punch in your uh, address and your zip code. Don't even have to put the city. Just zip code and bada-bing. And a lot of will show you how much your property is uh, estimated value right now. But the chart, you know, over the past however long you want to have the chart, right. year, 10 years, whatever, and how much it in, increased in value or decreased in the last week and uh, your next-door neighbors and across the street and down the road and all this other stuff and who's doing whom and whatever. Fabulous. See, every now and then we find something good on the Internet. WQAM, hello. QAM. <laughs> Not there. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. How are you, buddy? Okay. You know what makes me sick? What makes you sick, sir? That freaking president of ours flying around the country in Air Force One, and we're paying for his, his fuel... Yeah. Salary well, and everything else. That's fuel is born every minute. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty. That guy sounded really agitated and angry, didn't he? Right. No. American public is just uh, you know they're they're in la la land. Just like Diana said in Network, which I still say is the mo- one of the most significant movies ever made, one of the most prescient movies ever made. Even though Josh is too ignorant to understand it. Five six seven oh five sixty. And, and it wasn't that interesting. It was the Saudi deal. We want the Saudi deal stopped now. Right. Who did Mo huh, to stop the Saudi deal? Howard Beale or uh, the Democrats? Coincidence. They were knee deep in telegrams. They were, uh, what do you say? They were like uh, drowning in telegrams, something like that. Remember that? Mm-hmm. The Saudi deal. And that was 72 was the year for that? For network 72 or 74 or 76? One of those. Take your pick. I'm not sure. 72. Huh? I thought it was 72, but. Early 70s. Over 30 years. I could look at 30, it. Man. Ahead of his time, Petty Chasky. 
And here we are mired in the same crap today, being prisoners of oil. And just like Ned Beatty said, uh, there is no uh, Russia and there is no U.S. There are, they, uh, there, it's, there are only uh, IBM and Exxon and uh, uh, et cetera, Union Carbide. Huh? 76. 76, like I said. That's why I covered my hands. in the box right now. The world is a business, Mr. Beale. We don't count. You're insignificant. People don't want to hear that. Nobody cares about your life. You're insignificant. The world is a business. We got the biggest trade deficit in American history right this second, right this moment. We've got uh, unbelievable spending money like it's being coming out of a faucet somewhere. Took the largest, largest surplus in the history of this country and turned into the biggest deficit in like uh, a couple of years. And in the deficit and the business about the war in Iraq. Well, guess what? Who started that? Who invented that? While people are drowning and starving and homeless and running around schlepping trying to find you know a way to put their life back together again, couldn't care less. These are not the constituents. These are not uh, my uh, base, as he said in that movie. That movie should have been on the poll yesterday, Fahrenheit 9-11. That's right. right. Let's do it. Do over. It, yeah, do over the poll. Because every time it comes on, I can't shut it off. Mm -hmm. Little school kids, old grandmas, people in swaddling clothes, everybody from coast to coast and pillar to post should be forced to watch that movie 24-7, 25-8, round and round the clock. And they watched it, and they still went out there and voted for a bozo, for a lying sack of crap. Well, at least some of them did, and then not enough of them did, so they you know, fixed the result again. Two fixed presidential elections in a row, and the public is like, Oh, gee, Kelly Clarkson, we've got a big hit out there now. Kelly Clarkson, my ass. Well, speaking of that, that very man, I think, what did I just say the other day? I was challenging Josh to give me an artist who's going to be, uh, you know, in the last few years going to be remembered for their music for a long, long time, like all these people from the 50s and 60s and 70s. Couldn't do it, could you? Not one. And you want to know what the proof is of that? What? How, how mediocrity is where it's at. Mediocrity, that's what America's all about now. Striving as mediocre as they want to be. Your president, the crowd, only wish he was mediocre. That would be a big improvement. Barry Manilow. You fairy. Top the U.S. pop charts for the first time in nearly 29 years this week with an album of pop evergreens released in time for Valentine's Day. That's enough. I don't know what makes me more sick. That movie that you forced me to watch yesterday. Mm -hmm. Or no, you had good intentions. You sent me a bootleg copy there, and believe me. Hey, look with all the money. You know, you know something? I, you know me. I don't drink. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't. Would be in diabetes. But right, that was enough to start. Hit. I was ready to hit the bottle. <laughs> now, what would you drink if you drank? Uh, milkshake. Okay. Probably one of them from uh, Little, Arby's, you know. White Zinfandel. One of them Jamaica like shakes from uh, Arby's. Mm. At any rate, I don't know what's worse. That movie, Bare Ass Mounting, or Barry Manilow, which I'm sure he's got plenty of experience at that. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, a little right up his time. alley. The greatest songs of the 50s, featuring versions of such tunes as Unchained Melody and Love is a Many Splintered Thing, sold 156,000 copies in the week ending February 5th. His lone prior chart topper came in July 77 with the double LP, Live, Very Live. His last album, Scores, Songs from Copacabana and Harmony, released on the Concord Jazz label, peaked at number 47 in 2004. And now he's number one, Barry freaking Manilow. It's not only a genuine thrill to see the album enter the charts at number one, it came on the charts at number one, it came on at number one. You hear that? Yeah, what about it? But it's truly an historic occasion for both of us, said a statement from Arista, Arista Records founder Clive Davis, who first worked with Manilow in 74 in the Grammy-nominated Mandy. Oh, and if you're going to play Mandy right now, I'm going to upchuck my bacon from this morning. Oh, uh, uh, added Manilow, I've had some pretty amazing experiences in my career, but this one tops them all. I swear if you live long enough, anything is possible. Mary J. Blige's breakthrough jumped two spots to number two. And it's been dueling for number one honors with... With, oh, <laughs> Jamie Foxx's Unpredictable, which slipped to number four. Jamie Foxx, can he sing? No. Or what? As a matter of fact, yeah. Well, I just, I, well, I just got you playing it. See, I had it on the disc before. It's a lot easier, as you know. Oh, God. Somebody ought to be in prison for, for allowing that to be. She takes the face. There you go, there he is. Yeah, that's the good version. Is it? I'm sure it's better than the one he recorded. So there you yeah, go, you got probably. George Bush, Barry Manilow, uh, Bear Ass Mountain is uh, allegedly the number one movie. Or if it's not that, it's a constant gardener, which will make you constantly wonder how the hell you got sucked into watching it. 
Oh, my God. America, where are you? Not a good name for a book. Well, See, I was going to write that book, The Dumbing of America, but it's way too late for that. But America, where are you? Like a bunch of lost chillins, man. What the hell ever happened? 20 till noon at QAM. This what does this have to do with sports Neil anyway, Rogers. right? Right. This is 560 QAM. Where did you learn your trade, you idiot? Who ever told you that you could work with men? What you're hired for is to help us. Does that seem clear to you? To help us. To help men who are going out there to try to earn a living. You company man. You fairy. My name is Barry, sing like a fairy. I write bad songs about romance while I'm wearing spandex pants. I'm kind of shrimpy, my songs are wimpy. I had a series of big hits, and that was back in 76. Now no one wants to hear, they only laugh and sneer. They won't admit that they own my albums, because my songs are queer. Got a nose shape, like a banana. My two fans both live in Montana. Got a nose shape like a banana. Up my nose, you can fit half of the city of Atlanta. I write the song. Tristan in a hose, but now I'm on the case. My life is back in place, and so I'm singing again and sticking my schnoz in your face. Got a nose shape like a banana. My two fans both live in Montana. Got a nose shape like a banana. Up my nose, you could fit half of the city of Atlanta. He's number one, baby. He's a hit. You fairy. Okay, Frank in Melbourne says, add Miami Vice to your poll, the best show ever. Miami Vice. Let's hear it. All right. We'll put it on. Got it? All right. Best show ever, he said. Yeah, I think I saw half of one episode. There you go. Okay, anyway, let's uh, get to some important uh, Bush lies. I mean, some stuff. And wasn't I on this like Stink on Greg yesterday after he made that idiotic speech? What yep. did I say? I had my finger right there in the middle of it. Rectum. With pressure mounting on the White House to move uh, full, more uh, to more fully explain its anti-terrorism strategy, President Bush offered new details yesterday. A reported plot against downtown L.A. is evidence of success in foiling attacks. Federal officials had revealed two years ago they believed al-Qaeda operatives in West Coast follow-up to the 9-11 attacks had planned to hijack an airliner and crash it into what was then called the Library Tower. But Bush, offering new specifics in a speech designed to boost support for his national security policy, said yesterday that the terrorist operatives plan to use shoe bombs to breach the cockpit door. He said 9-11 mastermind Khalid Sheikh Mohammed had recruited and trained young Asian men to carry out the plot because suspicions, uh, suspicions of Arabs were running high, but that the plan was derailed when a Southeast Asian nation arrested a key al-Qaeda operative. Bush didn't name the nation or the operative, but his decision to reveal even the most incremental details of the reported plot underscored the effort the White House has undertaken recently to defend its anti-terrorism policies. The details did little to counter skepticism from Democrats and some law enforcement officials who have questioned whether the reported scheme had ever been put into operation before it was thwarted. It didn't go, said one U.S. official familiar with the operational aspects of the war on terrorism. It didn't happen. The official said he believed the Library Tower plot was one of many al-Qaeda operations that hadn't gone much past the conceptual stage. The official spoke on condition of anonymity, saying that those familiar with the plot feared political retaliation for providing a different characterization of the plan than that by the president. The lies from the president. Mayor Antonio Villagorosa, whatever his name is, said he was stunned. That's the L.A. mayor. Stunned that Bush revealed details of the reported terrorist plot without first relaying the information to city officials. Valerie Gosa said local authorities had heard some of the new information Wednesday from California domestic security officials, but not the specifics mentioned by Bush in his speech, which was carried nationally on cable TV, on propaganda TV. 
I would have expected a direct call from the White House, said Hillary Gose, a Democrat, during a City Hall news conference. We should have been aware of the details much before today. We did not all know all the facts. The mayor sought to reassure residents that L.A. was safe. He said the police and fire departments had taken precautions at high-rise buildings, including the one singled out by Bush. Villarreal Goza said police had specifically evacuated security and evacuation plans at the U.S. Bank Tower. This I evacuate, evaluated, and both. There is no imminent threat to L.A., the mayor said, flanked by police and fire officials. Critics yesterday accused Bush of reaching far back into time as part of a public relations ploy to maintain focus on his battle against terrorism, an issue that continued to win in public approval. Bush's chief political strategist, Karl Rove, said last month that Republicans in this year's elections would seek a way to paint Democrats as exhibiting a pre-9-11 mentality, while programs such as the warrantless surveillance show the president's toughness. Representative Brad Sherman described Bush's speech as a political stunt meant to draw attention from the mounting criticism of the NSA's warrantless wiretapping program and other questions about administration tactics. I can't think of a governmental reason to disclose these details at this time to the general public. Clearly the goal was to create headlines, said Sherman, who monitors security matters as the ranking Democrat on the House Subcommittee on International Terrorism and Nonproliferation. And as long as these bastards, these fascists, have got the, co- the willing and enthusiastic cooperation of the talking head fascist networks, he's going to be on there every day spewing lies and propaganda and covering his uh, rectum dumbass. You can bet on it. Speaking of ass... Yeah. Don't ask, I won't tell. Oh. A Long yes. Island pastor was charged yesterday with sexually abusing his three daughters. Hmm. A Long Island pastor was charged yesterday with sexually abusing his three daughters at their queen's home, allegedly having intercourse with the eldest of the three teenage girls twice a week for four and a half years. Oh, my God. Queen's District Attorney Richard Brown. Oops. Said that's his name. Right. said the pastor was arrested and charged with four counts of incest, two counts of endangering the welfare of a child, and two counts of sexual abuse in the second degree. Newsday is withholding the identity of the pastor to protect his daughter's privacy. What allegedly happened to these children is every child's and every mother's worst nightmare, Brown said. Even after the physical abuse has stopped, the consequences of such sexual assault for victims are profound and can result in emotional trauma from which they may never recover. Between July 2001 and January... The pastor had sexual intercourse with his eldest daughter, who now is about 19, about twice a week. Between September 2004 and June 2005, he allegedly sexually abused his two younger daughters 17 times. At the time, both were less than 14 years old. Kevin Ryan, a spokesman for Brown, said the abuse came to light after the eldest daughter confided in a cousin who then told an uncle, who then told your mama. Eventually, word got around to the girl's mother. She passed it by Bupus and down the uh, pipeline. The pastor was arrested shortly after midnight, was awaiting arraignment at Queen's Criminal Court late late last night. He couldn't be reached for comment. What what, what comment would he make? What comment? I got a comment. A a Manhattan minister who said he knew the pastor through a church church organization called him a warm and gracious person. The whole thing is very sad to hear, the minister. A warm and gracious person, just like that eternal clown John Wayne Gacy. That's right. It was always the life of the party. It was a a real laugh riot. God. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the Verizon Singular Wireless Line. Though you've seen every episode a zillion times, what TV series would you never get tired of watching? We got eight forty five on the poll. That's kind of weak, you know. No, actually, I didn't put this one on until midnight last night. That's why. Oh, well. See, that's why it's still a little short. Still short. Like Seinfeld two oh one, Simpsons one eleven, Star Trek ninety five, All in the Family seventy nine. South Park 72, MASH 62, Cheers 28, I Love Loosely 28, Hawaii 5017, Batman 15, Law and Odor 14, Kirby Enthusiasm 14, NYPD Blue 13, Honeymooners 11, Family Guy 10, Monty Python Flying Circus 10, Sex in the City 9, Soprano 7, Faulty Towers 6, The Andy Griffith Show 5, Mary Tyler Moore Show 5, The Jeffersons 5, Still Solamente Cinco, Cinque, in spite of the fact that Tom, whatever his name was, died. The next the upstairs neighbor. Tom Willis. Tom Willis, who was married to that uh, Roxy, uh, Foxy Roxy. And that's right. She is uh, Lenny Kravitz's mother. Right. We talked about that. Blind Date 4, Kojak 4, Cannon 3, Green Acres 2, Miami Vice 1, Solamente Uno, Mission Impossible 1, and the Beverly Hillbillies still have one out of 851. I'm sure we'll have, like, thousands of additional shows on here by the time we're through, won't we? Thousands. Like, probably a guy with the eyes will call in for the Partridge family. Well, we could just put it on right now. Okay, talk. go ahead. WQAM, hello. Uh, yeah, how about the odd couple for your poll? How about it? 
And if George Bush is listening to this, you're an idiot. <laughs> well, at least you got a little bit of emotion. That's good. That's a good start. Okay, that's excellent. Because like Howard Beale said, I don't know what to tell you to do, but first you got to get mad. Remember that? Yeah. First you got to get mad. I don't know what to tell you about the Russians or the uh, crime. I'm as mad as hell, but I'm not going to take this anymore. Oh! Listen to me. Television is not the truth. So turn off your television sets. Turn them off right in the middle of the set. Absolutely. Right. Somebody pick up Howard, please. Beale, that is. Doi, 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 doi. 70 QAM, hello. 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 Yes, Neil. Speaking. Yes, Neil. Neil, I got one for you, Paul. Yep. Uh, family guy. Family guy. Think I yep. Somebody said that and nobody put it on there. Okay, well, thanks. No, we did not put it on there. Josh was busy eating again or something because I just read yeah. those. Well, uh, do, you, do you see it? Do I you remember you just reading votes. it. It's got ten votes. Come on, what Josh, you, get with it. Yeah, Jesus. what are you starting up again? It's on there. It's got ten votes. Slacker. Yeah. By the way, all your stories are there for you. Sweet. Isn't that good? Sweet. You're, you're good to go, as they say. Good, good to go. go. It's going yeah. to the big just old. Like when, just like when you had too much food the other day, you were both good to go. And did, as a matter of fact. Yeah, we had to. <laughs> Although that started way oh. before the day before. Yeah. Well, I was started with the melting pot. No, no, it started before the melting pot. That just kind of hurried things along. I don't know what uh, inspired it, but something hmm. did. Later, later today, we'll get our sloppy sausage. Ooh, yeah. I forgot the You're getting the sloppy sausage today from John, uh, the, Baker. John the Baker? I think yeah. We both ordered the uh, oh sloppy sausage. Your advertising wow. working. You're talking sloppy sausage all the time. I have to have some. Well, there's nothing like a sloppy sausage. That's what I heard. That's what, that's what they said in that movie I just watched. Yeah, well, world. I'm about to find out. If you tuned in late, don't watch Bear-Ass Mountain. Mounties, okay? It's a piece of crap. <laughs> And I, seriously, and that, that part of it is, is not even really relevant. It's, it's like that has nothing to do with anything. It's not. It, it's just uh, nothing. I mean, they're not even like friendly up there in the uh, mountains. You know, just because they've done a couple of things, there, that don't make them good buddies. You know? Well, they were rough riders. Yeah, obviously, especially uh, Heath Ledger. That's what uh, what's her name? Michelle Williams said the same thing. That, that, that was, <laughs> you know, that was so sad. You know? And of course, obviously, the message was that he, you know, I, I mean, but that's been like done. Huh? That's been done in movies before. With the guy I know out that. Of I understand and, that. Yeah. But it was so gratuitous. It's such a piece of garbage, man. It, it just makes me. But then again, if Barry Manilow can be number one, you know, why not? Right. Why not? As mediocre as they want to be, the great American desperate search for mediocrity. And guess what? We found what? it. Oh, yeah. WQAM, hello. Hello. Can I talk to Neil? Speaking. Neil, I heard Pharrell this morning. Yeah. Yeah, I'm serious. Yeah, he starts at uh, 5 to 8 tonight. Yeah. He got married. Did you hear that? No, I didn't. Well, poor baby. Boy, I, I feel sorry a, for whatever baby I heard. Oh, boy. Oh, I feel Jesus. real sorry. That's all we need. Hey, yeah. can you play an old phone bit for me? Maybe. It was that kid that called, and he kept laughing when he kept hitting that gay button. That was a riot when that kid was yeah, laughing. This is him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, See this if you is can you. play that for me. This is you, isn't it? Isn't this Reverend Jones? No. This isn't is this one of his, are you one of his boyfriends? No, this yeah. isn't. This is George saying it's right. you. It's not him. All right. Jesus. Uh, George apologizes. Okay, no, Pally, have a great weekend. Sorry. Sorry, George. You're such a. No. Everybody's no, Reverend Jones, okay? No. Well, I, that, that, in your mind they are, and that's because no. you're. You're gay. Yeah. Right. Cut it out. You wish. What do you want to hear? What is that thing he's talking about? The Reverend Oh, that's that, uh, the phone call. Okay, yeah. I don't mind playing that. No, it's a funny call. Jackass, jackass Reverend Jones is, and his 14 boyfriends. And if Josh would just put Family Guy in here, then we'd be right, caught right up to date. This Get with is it. Neil Rogers. Got ten votes. This is 560 QAM. This is Mark Morgan. It's the 12 to 1 hour on QAM. Your show, it, it, it's punishing. Play a record or something. Anything. A record? They still make those. I don't care. Play anything. Can't stand it. <laughs> Just play anything. Uh, can't stand it. Well, I got to be the king of journalists here now. Is this Peter King? Sure. That's right. I'm uh, Peter King. I know I got to interview you. It's a big deal and stuff, but uh, can I ask you one thing? Go ahead. 
Who are you? What do you think I am, Noodle Brain? I'm a sport hole, see? Oh, look at that! The place is on fire! <laughs> the whole thing burning down! Billy, you can put it tight, I'm going to get it. It's going to have to go now. There was a fire, and uh, like that. <laughs> Just like that. By the way, Family Guy's got 11 votes. Would you put it on there already? Please. By the way, the food just showed up. Yeah. How's your sloppy sausage? The sloppy sausage is phenomenal, first is of all. Is it sloppy? Uh, yes, and I'm making a mess. You need to wear a bib the size of, a, like, a bed sheet. Wow. Now, like, what's on it? Chili and stuff? No, it's like <clears throat> it's like a sausage parmesan, mm. but it's a little bit, uh, like, instead of having the whole long like a sausage, sausage patty, you mean, or a sausage link? No, the sausage links, but they're but they're it's chopped up so that you can actually uh, you know get your mouth around it easy. Hmm. And uh, they brought enough food to feed the Chinese army, and it's excellent. All, and Thanks it's to the John kitchen. the Baker, we love you guys. And I got one of those giant uh, garlic rolls the size of Josh's head. Right. Well, he's got a bigger head than mine. Also, the size of uh, uh, Kimba Bow Camper's fist, you said, same as Josh's right. head. Exactly. Five six seven oh five sixty. See, at least you eat good anyway. Be sure and tell uh, Joe Bell on Monday that at least uh, we get to eat good, even though you guys are getting paid peanuts. That's right. That's all we got. We work for yeah. food. You're getting paid peanuts, and, of course, the shells make a mess, too, so he's probably not too happy about that. Be sure and tell him about all the uh, stuff that's going on. Oh, man. He's going to shut lunch. me up. Well, it's going to have to be about a five-part lunch, isn't I'm it? I'm pent up. I can talk fast. <laughs> yeah, you better. Be sure and tell him about how we get screwed over all the time because we don't do a sports show and because, uh, well, whatever. Mm-hmm. WQAM, line one. Hello. If, yes, sir. Anybody mention the prisoner? There you go. I, I love that. I got them all sitting in the other room, thanks to George. That's a good one. I can watch that over and over. Patrick McGowan. Okay, watch out. Rover's coming. The prisoner. Patrick McGowan. Hey, Patrick, how you doing, McGowan? Yeah, I haven't watched them all again, though. I've watched about five of them. You sent me that whole set. And they're sitting in there right now. By the way, I, I'm a little... I don't know. I shouldn't ask because it's go very ahead, confusing. You, you don't know the answer anyway. I'll make it up. Remember, I bought that new Samsung that with the um, the uh, DVD player right. for my TV set for my mm-hmm. HD TV, and it's got the special uh, connector or whatever the hell they call that thing. Uh, the S, uh, S video? No, no, it's not S video. Digital Jesus, connector? Guy, you, I, I thought I was the old fuddy duddy. S video is uh, older than Methuselah now. I'm just asking. No, it's the new uh, connection cord, whatever that All thing right. is that you have to have uh, for the, HD. The digital coaxial. Course, what, yeah, something like that. But what would you know about it? Because Josh ain't bought you the set yet. Right. But the fact is that I, when the new HD discs are coming, I, I guess the easiest way to find it is buy one of them and, uh, you know, watch right, it. But I, it should, I it should say on it because uh, whatever format it is. It should is, say it what? Should, it should say what format it is on there. Well, no, you, you don't follow what I'm saying. In other words, th- this DVD player was allegedly made to go with my Samsung DVD, my HD set. I see. Okay. Following? Right. And that's why it's got that adapter thing on it. and it's all, but, but the fact of the matter is until they come out with HD... DVDs, uh, the quality is no different. It's, it's still the same. Right. Unless, of course, it's Bear Ass Mountain, which is, I mean, it looked like it was uh, shot through uh, 14 like sheets of... Somebody uh, shot rolling. it with a handheld camcorder at the back of a theater, which and, and you know something? That was an improvement. <laughs> For the poll, 77, Sunset Strip. You got it? Got it. 77, Sunset Strip. I, I hate to say this, because Jake Quillen Hall, you know... He's uh, not a bad-looking guy, at least in uh, Donnie Darko, and I was a little long in the tooth. But you know who he really looks like? And he's got Toby you know Maguire saying, "Don't shoot till they see the whites of their eyes." Toby Maguire. No, he looks like Jeff Cohen. A right. younger no, Jeff I Cohen. Don't, I don't see that. Oh yeah, you will if, you, if you saw this movie. Which, well, maybe that's the reason you ought to watch it. See Michelle Williams of boobies, and then watch. Uh, you know. And Anne Hathaway, as I understand. Oh, and Hath- well, I haven't got to Anne Hathaway yet. Really? And I don't think uh, he did either. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I could be wrong about that, but yeah. I don't know. If she rolls over, maybe. I see. No, that, no, you got the, that's Heath Ledger. Oh, that's WQAM, right. hello. Neil God, happy Friday. Yes, ma'am. Uh, how about L.A. Law for the poll? Okay. And you were talking about the, the film Making Love before. It right. It just came out on DVD. I can't imagine why that is. You don't think it had anything to do with the Brokeback Mountain, do you? No, just a coincidence, I'm right. sure, just like Bush making an announcement yesterday. Right, absolutely. Now, did you see Making Love? Absolutely, yeah, sure I did. Now, and have you absolutely. seen Brokeback Mountain? Uh, no, I did not. But, please uh, don't. Please, please <laughs> yes, save the money. Not to, I, will not do I, that. I beg you, save your eyesight. Those two hours, you might need them someday. <laughs> I will do it. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, there you go. Making Love just came out with Michael Ankeen and uh, Harry uh, Hamlin and Kate Jackson. Harry Hamlish? Harry Hamlish and Marvin uh, Hamlin. 
I tell you, there's a guy that really bugs me. Is Marvin Hamlish? I don't, I don't, I don't know what it is. I just can't stand him. Do I know who that is? Huh? I don't know who that is. Marvin Hamlish, the pianist. What was that? He did the jazz. What was that uh, song? That Scott Joplin song. The um, oh, uh, the entertainer. Very annoying song. The entertainer. It's Marvin Hamlish. Do you know who that is? With the glasses, a real geeky-looking guy. I do know. Oh, very Jewish. How about this? Guess who this is right now? Marvin Hamlish. Da, 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 da. Well, that's yeah. it. Yeah, this is it. What do you mean, guess who this is by? Yeah, that's it. Know. That's the end of the thing. I'm trying to fool you, though. I hate it. it. Trick question. Oh. WQAM, hello. QAM. Hey, Neil, how are you, sir? Okay. Uh, I got a little idea. Uh, since George doesn't make much uh, money, as you say, uh, and I don't know of anybody that doesn't like George on the radio, or Art <laughs> Curtis, for that fact. Uh, you must, how about have, you must travel uh, in a very small circle of friends. <laughs> How about uh, splitting most paycheck between them both and give George an hour and Curtis an hour? All right. There you go. That's a that's a thought. There you go. And then most of them they can make a little bit more money because both everybody loves them. They're the good guys. Okay, Have thanks, Kelly. Thanks. I'll take. There it. you go. There's your answer. Talk to, uh, present that to Joe Bell. Make a presentation on uh, Monday. Half of most money. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I think he was making a few bucks. Absolutely. But nevertheless, plus he get paid off till the middle of March. No mo. And you might also find out who's going to be doing two to four. I, you know, and like you have to restrain me. I have to, I can't stop. It's neurotic repetition. It's just like Heath Ledger with that uh, that whole deal. You know, that whole deal. neurotic repetition. Have to stop. Must stop. I don't care what they put on. I'm not involved in the twenty hours a day. You know, it's all sports. Do whatever you guys want. And uh, with my blessing, I'll promote it enthusiastically and heartily and uh, verbally and uh, even if I can't stand it, whatever it is. All right. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I don't want to get involved because they don't—they will don't. never listen to anything I tell them because I know nothing, and it's always been that way, and it always will be, especially at this radio station. I know nothing. Well, it's about time you figured it out. Okay, thank you. WQAM, hello. Neil, how are you doing? Excellent. Good. Listen to the poor, uh, married with children. Great. Married great with show. children. There you go. Listen, uh, a couple I'm of things. Listening. The reason why Bush keeps doing these things, taking them out, and nobody says nothing, All is because things. when Howard Dean, remember when he said he suggested it was political? Uh, 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 so they did that on the national convention for the Democrats. Yeah. <laughs> they were, the Republicans were just waiting to see the reaction. And when all the Democrats went against Dean, there's a, there's a you know, green light for them to keep doing it. And they yeah. keep doing it, and they keep working. So. Democratic Party of the Antichrist, man, with yeah. just a handful of exceptions, uh, they, they make me want to puke. Ridiculous. Neil, you know, uh, I, I don't know if you know, but I want to download the, the Firefox thing, and I don't know how, like, you just press the download button, and that's it. That's or, it. That's it. And yeah. you keep saying that you. If you say that you can't get rid of Microsoft uh, Explorer, the Internet Explorer, I hate that thing. But it's the devil. It, do you have to have it on your computer? No. Nope. Well, yeah, you do. You can't get rid of it. No, you, it's no. in there when you buy it. It's a Bill Gates, uh, the the Antichrist. The six 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 is on the uh, serial number, and uh, uh, Bill Gates is right. And no matter what you try to do, you can't get rid of it. Yeah, well, I, I just don't know how to uh, choose uh, Firefox instead of uh, Microsoft Explorer. Well, what, what do you mean you don't know how you to put choose? Put the icon it? on your desktop and you click on that instead of Explorer. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, just don't ever use it. Just the the because it's there doesn't mean you have to use it. Make it your default b- browser right. under the options. Exactly. Oh, okay. Thank you. I love you guys. Bye bye. That's okay. <laughs> Coming up next on Tech Talk, we'll tell you how to clean your cache. That's right. How to do uh, anything? How to wipe whatever it is you need to know. <laughs> For today's poll, oh here's a list. Oh boy. Monk, Saint Elsewhere, and Soap. Don't drop it. I can't wait till that new show comes on Body Wash. So. Pharrell was on the Stern Show this morning said, I was on the morning with Neil Rogers, and we dominated the market. I didn't realize it was a team effort. No, neither did anybody else. I understand you were the dominatrix. Yeah. He is so... I, I don't want to even say it. Because you know. there are a lot of people out there who are dazzled by his BS and by the gravity voice. Yeah. He, he, he left me limp. And, and, you know, I've never encountered anybody. The only person even close to him was like Alex Bennett. Only Alex Bennett wasn't constantly in a hallucinatory state, except Florida. But he's one of those people that you just couldn't talk to him. I mean, he'd come in in the morning. I'd be getting ready to do my show, and he, you know, did the show in the other studio there. He'd come in during a break, and like, uh, and, and I would say something to him, and he'd be like, and he just, he would still be bah! on the way out. He wouldn't listen to a word I told him. You know, I tried to give him a little, uh, yeah. And they tried to, like, steer him in the right direction, and he steered his own ass right out the door. Like, he has, every, everywhere he has ever been, 
Now, the luxury he's got now being on Sirius, I mean, he's probably not going to get canned for language or whatever, although I notice they're, from what I'm reading, they're tiptoeing the line because they're still under a lot of duress, you know, that pink duress. But uh, he just he just has a death wish, this guy. You know, in addition to which, I, I don't know what, I don't really know what the act was there except the big package and the big D and the big... Uh, isn't that basically, doesn't that sum it up in about a half a dozen words? What was there? Is there anything I'm missing? Uh, I'll ask somebody who listened. Yeah. I think it was a sports show, though. So I don't you know. Oh. No, it, no, it's not a sports show. Well, whatever you're, you're it was. crazy. You're absolutely crazy. And to think that this guy did the Atlanta Trashers hockey play-by-play for a season. I, I just, I'm trying. I, I know we had some audio on that once upon a time, and I played it, and I was just aghast. And by the way, there's clips from Gully lately. He's starting to make some inroads. He sounded pretty good. It's kind of hard to pick and choose when there's just, like, clips, you know. But at least he sounded good. I think I butched them up a little bit. Always leave it to me. Oh, there's Glenn Healy. At that time, one-on-one was the best player in the world. Healy. There you go. Good old Glenn Healy. Lousy goalie. Good commentator, though. 12 no, Let's get the hockey and test story here in my pile. That Betsky story, that's a great headline on the front of the New York Post. As much of a crappy uh, Rupert Murdoch rag of a newspaper, that is. It's, uh, they they uh, have some interesting crap, especially the front page. Betsky with that big ski nose, needle nose hanging out there. Well, look at this. WHO launches anti-bird flu campaign in Nigeria. Just kill all the birds, okay? Shoot a bird for Jesus. Or flip a bird for a bush. God, he just makes me want to vomit. That'd be a good poll. What makes you iller? Uh, Barry, of course, this audience, I'm sorry I brought it up, and it's your fault because you don't want to send me the copy of that movie. If, I, if you wouldn't have sent me that, I never would have watched an hour, and I wouldn't have talked about it. Yeah, Move it like, along, will you? Move it along. Much, well, how much money Get off of this people. fag stuff already. Yay. And let me say it again. That that part of the story is, is quite frankly, uh, you know, if you can even get that far, it, all that not that significant. Because unless something materializes later on that I miss, I mean, there there isn't even the slightest like uh, like a handshake when when they leave at the end of the summer up there in the woods, man, and all that sheep herding, uh, and, and all that rolling around in the tent. Uh, there, there's not. Oh, and then when he said make some come out of a pitch in the tent, that was that was as far as I can handle. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, there's not even the slightest bit like a like a wink, a smile, a smirk, like a pat on the back, like, hey, it sure was a lot of fun, let's do it again sometime, or let's just forget about it, or whatever, you know. He didn't even say it was the, uh, the the booze, it was the whiskey. Right, that's a good excuse. I mean, even Emil Hurst said it was the, well, no, he didn't say it, maybe they both said it was the ecstasy, remember they both said that? Right, yeah. Or I think what he said is it was like ecstasy. <laughs> 1214 at 560 WQAM. Okay, Valentine's Day is coming up on Tuesday. The last thing you want to do is spend the, this weekend shopping. So here's a great idea. Send a pajamagram. A pajamagram is the perfect way to spoil your wife or girlfriend or both and give them exactly what they're looking for. She'll receive the best pajamas delivered in a hat box she'll love along with a lavender sachet, a gift card, and a do not disturb sign all for free. Sending a pajamagram only takes a few minutes, but she'll think you spent a month planning it. Shop online at pajamagram.com or call 1-800-GIVE-PJs. Find all the top brands from comfy to sexy. Great bath and body gifts, too. All that spa stuff that women just love. Plus, the packaging is amazing, so you don't have to wrap it. A pajamagram is the perfect gift, and best of all, they'll think of you every time they put them on. Women want to be pampered, and this is a gift that you'll both love. Valentine's Day delivery is still guaranteed. So call 1-800-GIVE-PJs or visit pajamagram.com right now. That's pajamagram.com. Be sure and tell that Neil told you to call 1-800-GIVE-PJs. PJs. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. This is Randy West, and as per our phone conversation, I talked to Peter North the other day. He tells me your real name is Neil Down, and he still ain't interested. Oh, oh, she's sleeping there with a little teddy bear now. Inside her closet, my pants are down. I've been here all night, hoping she'll wake up. I just hope that her daddy doesn't come in. And you know, he's gonna kick me out of his closet. Oh, her alarm clock just went off. She'll be up soon. Oh, she just woke up and she's stretching her arms out. Oh, oh. I'm looking at her through this closet, and I hope her daddy doesn't walk in, because she's only a minor, she's eight years old, my favorite kind, and I've been watching her all night, and I know 
And if a daddy walks in, he's gonna be upset. Get out of this cloud, oh, no, here he comes. Bitch, don't do breakfast, wake yeah. up, wake up, honey. It's time to go to breakfast. Oh no, he just opened up the closet. <laughs> But well, R. Kelly, he's uh, spent a hell of a lot of time in the closet, hasn't he? Mm. Him and Tommy Cruz and John Revolta. I love this. See, I, I enjoyed that tremendously, and I'm passing that around and making sure that everybody gets to oh see that God. South Park oh episode, God. as opposed to this awful movie. <laughs> what are you so doing? The public service. Old sloppy sausage oh, there at QM so today, good. thanks to John the Baker. That is just uh, see, I, I so feel um, I, I got mixed emotions about it because on the one hand, I'd probably be in a diabetic coma by now right. between the melting pot and the John the Baker. So you guys can enjoy it, and we can all uh, we'll cavell about it. We'll make the yummy sounds. Right. All the smacking sounds, like Mr. Ego. Are there any peppercorns on it? No. Well, I Good. Don't. Abramoff says he met Bush almost a dozen times. Not more lies, huh, from the White House? Oh, jeez. Jack Abramoff said in correspondence made public yesterday that President Bush met him almost a dozen times, disputing White House claims, lies, that Bush did not know the former lobbyist at the center of the corruption scandal. Right. The guy saw me in almost a dozen settings and joked with me about a bunch of things, including details of my kids. Perhaps he's forgotten everything. Who knows? Abraham Moff wrote an email to Kim Eisler, national editor for the Washingtonian magazine. Abramoff added that Bush also once invited him to his Texas ranch. Maybe he was going to be there with the uh, Taliban guys, or maybe with Bandar Bush, or both. The messages were made public by the American Progress Action Fund, a liberal activist group. Eisler confirmed their accuracy to Reuters, but said he didn't intend them to become pubic. They reflect the feeling of frustration he has, not just with Bush, but with all these guys, guys claiming they didn't even know him. It's kind of like uh, Kenny Boy Lay, remember? Who? Kenny Boy Lay? We don't know him. Abramoff pleaded guilty to fraud charges in early January, is cooperating with prosecutors in a corruption uh, probe that can implicate lawmakers and officials all across D.C. Bush has said he never had a discussion with Abramoff and doesn't remember having his picture taken with him. Right. The White House has said Abramoff attended three Hanukkah receptions at the White House. Eisler said he had seen five photos of Abramoff with Bush, none taken at Hanukkah parties. How do you like that? Scott McClellan lied again yesterday, uh, said the revelations didn't prove that Bush knew him well. Scott McClellan, who's got a, how can he look himself in a mirror at night? Not just to the lying, just looking like that. You know? What a jackass. Mm -hmm. He's no area flasher, I'll tell you that. But then who is? 5670560, oh, pound 560 in the Verizon and singing. Oh, look at that. Look at those uh, people in Iran there. It's the cartoon controversy. They're all like, it looks like Heil Hitler they're doing Americans over there. gathered for Friday prayers did chant anti-U.S., anti-Israeli, and anti-European slogans. Oy! It took almost three months, Colleen, but finally we're getting the results of Iraq's legislative election. Yeah, actually, they've been certified. This is CNN in International, by the way. I, I think they're putting the on 15 hours a day to make cutbacks because they have to play for, pay for a wolf's uh, barber. Is there anybody more insipid, idiotic than Wolf Blitz Creek? We're in the Situation Room, and uh, we're in the, and here's Jack Cafferty. Jack Cafferty must be so embarrassed to be on that thing, you know. He's, he's got to be, like, uh, hanging his head in shame. He'll still take the money, but he's got to be more Mordecai to be on that thing with Wolf Blitz Creek in the Situation Room. Thank God nobody under the age of 100 watches CNN. Thank the Lord for that. Gretzky on the line. Reports a hockey legend is heard in tape calls by authorities talking about his wife's ties to the betting ring. And right at the moment that they're starting the Olympics over there in Torino, huh? What? And here he's the head honcho of the Canadian uh, hockey team. I bet you Pat Quinn is going to like, uh, pretend he do not even know who he is. Phoenix Coyotes coach and hockey great Wayne Gretzky reportedly knew about a New Jersey gambling ring. And according to the AP, discussed on wiretap how his wife could avoid being implicated. His wife, Janet Jones. See. The Newark Star Ledger, citing unnamed law enforcement officials, said that wiretap conversations between Gretzky and Phoenix County's associate coach Rick Tockett indicated that Gretzky knew about the gambling ring. Gretzky was caught on wiretaps made within the past month. Old Wayne Betsky, old needle nose, who was as annoying as anybody who ever stalked the face of the globe. Tockett, a former National Hockey League All-Star, was charged Tuesday with financing an illegal sports gambling ring. He'll be arraigned February 21, according to the State Attorney General's office. He faces charges of promoting gambling, money laundering, and conspiracy. After Phoenix's game last night, Gretzky said he had never bet and said he planned to stay with the Coyotes and attended, attend the Turin Olympics as Team Canada's executive director. I'm not going anywhere, he said. I'm still going to coach the Coyotes. I've done nothing wrong, said Needle Nose. 
Janet Jones Gretzky reportedly wagered a half a million dollars on games during the last six weeks, including 170, or, uh, take it back, 75 grand on the Super Bowl, a mere pittance. She even wagered on which team would win the opening coin toss, uh, coin toss, <laughs> coin <laughs> star ledger. I always say that, coin toss. Jones hasn't been charged yet. She even bet on which team. Not that she's got a gambling problem, you understand. You realize that even Hank, I bet you didn't make a, too big of a bet on who would the opening coin toss. Is that incredible or what? Sad. She bet a half a million dollars on games just in the last six weeks. You know, when you got the big bucks, everything is relative. She ain't paying. She ain't playing any quarter slots. I guarantee you that. At no time did I ever place a wager on my husband's behalf. Period. Jones said in a statement provided by the Coyotes last night. Other than the occasional horse race, my husband doesn't bet on any sports, she said. Law enforcement officials said Tockett collected more than a million dollars in bets from Jones Gretzky and NHL players, unnamed so far. Tockett's been granted leave of absence by the NHL, which has opened an investigation. There is no evidence that anyone, including Jones Gretzky, made hockey bets, yet hockey players are prohibited from making NHL wagers. There are no rules that forbid them from placing bets on other sports through a legal sports book, through a legal sports book. Former L.A. Kings owner Bruce McNall, who spent four years in jail on bank fraud and conspiracy charges, said he talked with Gretzky Wednesday and wasn't too concerned. I think that when it all comes out, McNall said, things will be quite a bit different than it's been in the initial stages. How do you like that? Betsky and Janet Jones. Well, you know something? She's under a lot of duress. How'd you like to look like her and be married to him, you know? Well, he's making the big bucks, isn't he? That, that's what I'm saying. Well, I mean, he is just grotesque. Uh, it's not, nothing uncommon about that. She's maybe, a maybe, maybe he's got uh, you know, some talent with that needle nose of his. Maybe that's, that's what a lot, right. maybe that's what Lyle, I love it. Maybe that's what his appeal was to uh, Julia Roberts. Because there, there had to be something there that didn't meet the eye. Yeah, you know? maybe she liked his music. Is that what it was? I oh, yeah, Lyle, I love it. He was no Johnny Cash, I'll tell you that. 5670560. A boy named Sue, my ass. Any minute now. Pound 560 on the Verizon Singular Wireless Line. WQAM, hello. What's up, Neil? Yes, sir. Do, do you have the shield on your list? The shoe? The, the shield. shield. Oh, the shield. I thought you said the shoe. The really big shoe, like that's Solomon. <laughs> well, the I'm shield. Expecting. You got him on. Oh, uh, Neil. Too late. See, I was already like in mid stream there. Couldn't stop. I know. Had my finger halfway down. Anyway, the shield, it's on there right now. How about that really big shoe? I'm Her so glad that uh, you got a chance. Now, wait a minute. Am I thinking? No, he wasn't on that thing, was he? That's no, but I had seen uh, footage oh. of him before. Because to see that, 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 that's like this Bare Ass the Mountain movie. I probably should have told you to watch it. Because my describing it, I can't do justice as to just how bad it is. I, I'm serious. I'm there on the couch, and I got, like, my two big pillows, my head propped up, and I'm watching. And, and uh, like, three times, I had, like, practically smacked myself in the head just not to fall asleep. <laughs> Yeah, just like that. I mean, that is just so ponderous. But let's move along. Let's move it along. Right, yeah. We don't want to get that Julieta all upset. Can't so we move still. it along? Oh, man. How would you like to wake up next to that bitch every day? No, I guess you should probably see a picture first. Yeah, exactly. I mean, could it and be worse? in your case, 27 past noon at 560 WQM, we got... And then I'll steal his toupee. Hey, Perot. What? By the way, son, uh, I've been giving it some thought. See? Uh, well, what do you think it is? I knows that me and you can do much better go in six to ten and not in five. A gentile and a cranky Jew, I think we might be happy to get there. I think you really got out of your mind. You gotta have your wee wee bag strapped on too tight. No chance I'll do a show with you. <laughs> I'd rather die. We'd be crappy together. Why, I'll have you know that I'm a big mocky Jew from Brooklyn Heights. I've been raped by everybody but you. You're not my type. Me and Mo, that would blow. No way that if we had a fight that you'd survive. Who'd want to hear a genitile in pushy time? That's crappy together. So would you and me, for me, 
is much better six to ten, not five. It's only right that I should get more sleep at night. I think we might be happy together. <laughs> happy together. Twelve thirty two on QAM. I just figured it out. I guess I'm a little slow today. That took me about an hour to figure it out. Well, the reason that uh, Lautenberg and the Democrats are being so kissy kissy with uh, Mickey Brown, he's small potatoes. See. Oh. They're glad that they're glad that he's cooperating there. What they want to do is get him to start naming names. I was just reading right. some of the stuff he was uh, BSing about this morning, right. and they want him to start naming names and get you know make the administration look bad. Because let's face it, the Democrats don't care about those dark folks in the New Orleans or any of the other poor schleppers there any more than the Republicans do. They talk a better game, yeah. but they couldn't give a crap less the, either. They're the decoy party. So if they can make political hay out of this and about all the incompetence and the lies, it's just it, you know it's more uh, ammunition for the case, which is fine. That's good if they're making a case. Well, you want some more ammunition for the case? Okay. Okay. The former CIA official who coordinated U.S. intelligence on the Middle East until last year has accused the Bush administration of cherry-picking intelligence on Iraq to justify a decision it had already reached to go to war and of ignoring warnings that the country could easily fall into violence and chaos after an invasion to overthrow Saddam Hussein. Sounds to me like he was... Absolutely uh -huh. correct, sir. Paul R. Pilar, who was the national intelligence officer for the Near East and South Asia from 2000 to 2005, acknowledges the U.S. intelligence agency's mistakes in concluding that Hussein's government possessed weapons of mass destruction, but he said those misjudgments didn't drive the administration's decision to invade Iraq. Official intelligence on Iraqi weapons programs was flawed, but even with its flaws, it was not what led to the war, Pilar wrote, in an upcoming issue of the Journal of Foreign Affairs. Instead, he asserted, the administration went to war without requesting and evidently without being influenced by any strategic-level intelligence assessments on any aspect of Iraq. On any aspect of Iraq. It has become clear that official intelligence was not relied on in making even the most significant national security decisions, that intelligence was misused publicly to justify decisions already made, that damaging ill will developed between Bush policymakers and intelligence officials, and that the intelligence community's own work was politicized, Pilar wrote. Pilar's critique is one of the most severe indictments of White House actions by a former Bush official since Richard Clark, former National Security Council staff member, went public with his criticism of the administration's handling of 9-11 attacks and its failure to deal with the terrorist threat beforehand. It's also the first time that such a senior intelligence officer has so directly and publicly condemned the administration's handling of intelligence. I thought they were like, like intelligent. And they're not. They're like afraid or they're dumb. Who wrote that? Who wrote this? Yeah, who was it about? Walter Pincus. Oh. Washington Post. All right. No, because I want to look at it later. Oh. It's on our website, I think. No, so, I, know. I I beg your pardon? I want to look, it out, look at it with my phone when I'm taking it. Well, go to the Washington Post. Post. That's the I official false use of data on Iraq. It's probably going to be on there for tomorrow, I would think, because of today's article. So I don't think Josh is that quick. Oh, I don't know. Have you seen him? No, I don't want to hear about it. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty the Verizon singular wireless line. Let's not to find out about that till after he watches bare ass mounting. <laughs> WQAM. We're QAM. Hello. Hey, Neil, how you doing? Okay. Hey, listen, uh, talking um, uh, movies. Uh, I, I know you not really necessarily talking about. We just mentioned Brokeback Mountain, but uh, uh, did you see the movie Kinsey? No, George was talking about that before, but we have neither one of us seen it yet. Um, I saw it last night, and it's actually it's a, it's a pretty good movie. I mean, it's not fast action pace, obviously, anything like that, but uh, it's, it's really a good movie. Just you forget how much of his work was so important back in those days, and how back how in the brutal, day, yeah. how brutal it was to these people back in the day, sexually. Um, also, I mean, I, I know that Boca uh, Brian doesn't need any help, but uh, I would sure love to hear a little bit with uh, now. Mo and Jay Fiedler sitting on the corner somewhere in Brooklyn eating pizza together talking about what went wrong down here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> talking about the old days. Reminiscing about the old, old uh, ancient style. Okay, yeah. thanks, Pally. Thanks, Bill. Oh, yeah, Boca Brian, uh, Chicken I can use some help once in a while. Just like that uh, golden shower. I mean, that uh, Ricky right. Showers. It was uh, golden. It was priceless. Five six seven oh five sixty. Oh, it's a Bill Schneider sand. The uh, administration did 
spoil and attack, not necessarily because of wiretapping, they're not claiming that, but because of international cooperation with countries in Asia, particularly Southeast Asia. They didn't name the countries, uh, but they said there were Asians in, Asian terrorists involved. Bill, on the mayor... Uh, on the mayor and, and the police chief, I mean, are we talking about Democrats here? Isn't this an election year? I mean, aren't they taking a shot? I mean, why would the president have to tell the mayor of Los Angeles that something had been foiled? Oh, my really God. Can that you believe point? this? Well, I think the mayor of Los Angeles needs to know that there was a plot against his city. Yeah, right. Oh, uh, you know, so they even got to this guy, this guy from CNN International. They even got to him. Why would the mayor need to know that they're going to, like, blow up the tallest building in L.A.? I mean, you know. Yeah, this is on a need-to-know basis. Oh, though, my no. God. You know something? Seriously, CNN... Yeah. If, if there's anything that needs to be taken down, forget about uh, towers and stuff like that. CNN, their tower must come down. That's the only tower we need to worry about. However, they're transmitting this signal, okay? Whatever technical equipment is uh, putting CNN on the air all over the globe, that, uh, uh, that satellite needs to be uh, taken out of the sky now. They are the antichrist of the media. They are the, see, Fox, even though you know, they, they, they put on a, you know, a weak pretense, fair and balanced my ass, you know, everybody is onto them. So they don't even make a pretense of being right objective but these bastards here on this thing man between dana bash and kura phillips and that damn rush limbaugh's wife and then of course uh, lou dobbs and uh wolf wolfgang uh, uh himmler uh, blitzkrieg i mean what, what are we talking about over here what, what are we talking about? We're talking about fascist news right. is what you've got time. you people at the cnn bureau in miami i'm going to tell you right now i'm going to come there and pee on your desk how do you like that next time i'm in town i'm going to come right there and pee all over your desk and maybe do a couple other numbers, too, a two and a three. A Lawrence Welk. A one or two and a three. I mean, it's, a, it's just pathetic what they pass off. I mean, this guy, Jim Clancy on CNN International, when I'm in Europe watching uh, that network, uh, generally speaking, they're always ripping Bush and ass. But now that they're simulcasting this couple hours every day into the U.S., now he's uh, all of a sudden uh, kissy-kissy with a uh, fascist all of a it, it makes no sense to me. I just wonder who's exchanging the big brown paper sacks, you know what? I mean, we know about the little brown sack that very jackass, you know, claims to have his bologna luncheon every day. That's that's probably where uh, the ticket, they got something in there for Barry. Put a little something in the sack. But the CNN, man, somebody has got to, somebody over there has got to either be on the take or they're just, uh, or they're just a bunch of card-carrying Nazis, that's all. I just want to see them all get on camera once and do the old goose step. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Yeah. As long as they're in sync. You know. As a matter of fact, I got a story about goose stepping. I bet you never believed that in a million years. No, I didn't. German, this is in the online British Sun. Speaking of Rupert Murdoch. German cops will use sweeping powers to collar England fans doing Basil Fawlty style Hitler impressions at the World Cup. Okay. They will be instantly <laughs> banged up for two weeks, banged up, if they goose step like John Cleese in his most famous Fawlty Tower scene. And hardcore louts who give Nazi salutes, like the one jokingly made by Michael Barrymore in Celebrity Big Brother, could be hauled before a judge within 24 hours. If convicted of inciting hatred, they'll face jail terms of up to three years. Wearing joke German helmets or any, or any offensive insignia will also result in a stretch behind bars. So I guess Hogan's heroes won't be there, right? Damn it. The crackdown was revealed by police in Nuremberg, where England will play Trinidad and Tobago in a first-round World Cup match on June 15. The city is especially sensitive to WW2 jibes. Its gleaming World Cup stadium stands in the shadow of the parade ground used for Hitler's notorious Nazi rallies in the 30s. And there's a picture, there's a picture here of Michael Barrymore with a mustache, the Adolf Hitler, doing me a salute. It's cute. The city was carpet bombed by the Allies during the war. Cops there say Nazi taunts are not funny and will not be tolerated. Oh, Police Chief on. Gerhard Hoffmann, a 59-year-old former judge and mafia crime buster, said, We will come down hard on people using insulting behavior or make trouble. We're very sensitive about our history. English football fans should be aware that the Nazi salute and provocative behavior like goose-stepping in public <laughs> will be punished. Oh, what did I tell you about those uh, Brits, huh? What is this man doing here? We will offer the warmest welcome to true football fans, but anyone glorifying extremism here risks arrest. You know, I, quite frankly, if you ever saw the Brits walk, how do you how do you tell the difference between that and goose stepping? Oh, well, one's a little bit more bent over. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, in their version of that Aerosmith song, it said, "Don't walk this way." I think I did that yesterday. Anyway, it's a nineteen till one, but it, you can never. Hi there, you bastard. Here's a little number I wrote the other day while out duck hunting with a judge. Quack. <laughs> Thank you very much, the FCC. Thank you very much for fining me. Five thousand bucks a 
So I'm really out of luck That's more than Heidi Fleiss was charging me So thank you very much, the FCC For proving that free speech just isn't free Clear Channel's a dear channel, so Howard Stern must go Attorney General Ashcroft doesn't like strong words and so He's charging twice as much as all the drugs for Rush Limbaugh So thank you all so very much So thank you very much, dear Mr. Bush For heroically sitting on your tush for Halliburton, Enron, all the companies who fail. Let's send them a clear signal and stick Martha straight in jail. She's an uppity rich bitch, and at least she isn't male. So thank you all so very much. So thank you, Dick, Jamie, too. Thank you and everything you do. Your pacemaker must be a fake, you haven't got a heart. As far as I'm concerned, you're just a pasty-faced old fart. And as for Condoleezza, she's an intellectual dart. So thank you all so very much. Yes. So thank you very much, the EPA, for giving all Alaska's oil away. It really is a bummer when I can't fill my hummer. The ozone's a no-go zone, now that Arnold's here to say... The nuclear winter games are going to take place in L.A. So thank you all so very much. Absolutely. So what the planet fails, let's save the great white males. And thank you all so very much. So Pedro says, uh, how about Hogan's Heroes? You just got through playing the theme there. Right. Let's do it. What about it? Let's get it on there. Says, I have almost all the episodes on VHS. My kids really like it, too. And uh, Hogan's Hero. There you go. Now, let's see. Richard Dawson was on Hogan's Heroes, right? Right. And uh, Kling, uh, what the was his name? Kling uh, to this? Kling, uh, Herner, Herner, Herner Klemper. Oh, uh, Werner Klemper, right. And Bob Crane, of course, was Werner, real I pervert. Get, I get my Werners confused. Werners from Detroit, which was, uh, they used to call it Tiger Pea. Werner's uh, Soda. All and right. then there was Werner von Braun. And uh, we don't have that, do we? The Tom Lear. Uh, somewhere we, somebody we, stole we my have CD. To. Huh? We have to. Werner von Braun? We've got the Vatican rag, but yeah. we don't got no Werner von Braun. Somewhere I got it there, unless somebody steal it. I always think of Werner, Werner uh, Klemperer as an, uh, like a conductor. Isn't, it like, isn't there a conductor named Klemperer? Otto Klemperer. Okay. I'll take your word for it. Okay. Five six seven oh five sixty. Wasn't he from the Ottoman Empire? Pound five sixty on the Verizon and Singular Wireless Line. That's one thing George knows, man. He knows his history. He knows his hysterical his historical facts. That's uh, interesting stuff. Although that Christopher Colombo uh, thing, Christopher Cologne, we had yesterday. Yeah, that was, I was right. That was one I of think his that, many names. That uh, was a little bit beyond my scope. You know. Yeah. Was he Italian? Was he Jewish? Was it's he Catholic? Shrouded uh, in mystery. Who really cares when you come right down to it? But he well, just like Shakespeare, man, was he like, uh, you know, animal, vegetable, or mineral? Or was he bacon? And how about Homer and the Iliad and the Odyssey and all these other things, you know? I'm Homer. a homo? That's the one. WQAM, hello. Hey, then you got Mikhail's Navy on your pole? Mikhail's Navy <laughs> with, uh, yeah, right. Very <laughs> poor guy. That uh, guy can't even say it with a straight face. Hey, he liked it, okay? What are you laughing about? He liked Ernest Borgnine. That's fine. I'm looking for the theme. I don't have it. Oh, damn it. I bet you I got it. I have it in the Navy. I have Navy Blue. What the hell is that? Oh, this. Oh. Well, that's horrible. Well, Bill Bryan says that Otto was Werner's father. Otto Klemper was Werner Klemper's father. Well, there you go. See, I told you I wasn't just dreaming it. What am I looking for? Um, uh, Mikhail's Navy. Here's Car 54. Where are you? Boy, that was a that bad, be. bad show. Here's Hogan series, but Harry's, but you already got it. Right. Uh, bad Masterson. Wagon train. There's a hold up in the Bronx. Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. That's enough. Oh, I don't think oh, I got Mikhail's Navy either on here, huh. probably because nobody... Oh, I got it. Aha, oh. uh -huh. how do you like that? Surprise. Da, 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 da. See, you ask and we'll tell. Plus, it'll kill a few seconds anyway. Aren't you shocked that I have it? TV's greatest oh, yeah, hits. Those CDs. TV tunes. Oh, I got a whole bunch of these babies. In fact, I need some new ones. Here you go. Right. Not a bad theme, just a bad show. 
You like this thing? What's good about this thing? It's cute. Quirky. A little bit rousy. It rocks. It rocks. It ain't the same league as the one I voted for, I'll tell you that. To the Batmobile. Let's go. Atomic batteries to power. Turbines to speed. Oh, this is good. This is the original here. Roger. Not that air dots this could be the twenty eight about. By the way, I'm going to uh, send well, you Can I ask movie. you a question? Was Neil Hefty? Remember I was telling you about a movie, Return to the Batcave, a while back? I beg your pardon? Wasn't I telling you about that movie, Return to the Batcave, a while back? No. It's kind of a movie recall. within a movie. Oh, like a show within the show, like right. we do. Part of it is really good and part of it is really corny. I'm going to yeah. give it to you anyway. You can just sift through the corn. It's a, movie about, it's a movie about Batman? It's a movie about Batman, about the uh, the making of it, the early days, how they got together. How they and they got talk about together. the fact that Burt Ward and uh, Adam West grew to hate each other like Yes, poison. yes. Man, they, they did. They don't just talk about it, they show it. Hmm. They show they, it? They play it out wow. it's like a mockumentary. Oh, I see. Well, probably Adam West was upset because they had to, like, pad his, uh, you know, his, uh, whatever you want to call they it. They did thing. the Boy Wonder. They, uh, they piece. stuck stuff in there because, uh, you know. Oh, was the boy wondering they passed? He was showing through, see. So I always kind of wondered. He was showing through? They had to put a oh, barrier there. Oh, let's not get too graphic here, okay, for crying out loud. Jesus. I, well, I he was a young guy. I think that less affected your whole mind. You know, young and a little bit uh, hung. Oh, that's what they uh, got into in the movie there. Really? Burt Ward? Now you tell me. Have you seen him lately? Oh, good. Well, you see him in the movie. See, that's the, uh, the format of the movie is him and Adam West kind of flashing back. They're flashing it? Yeah. yeah. And and they both look like old men. Burt Ward is like a hunchback now. Oh, I know that. I've never seen them both on the Biography Channel, which is one of my very favorites. They've had that whole deal, and they talked about how they hated each other like poison. But they were both sure getting a lot of action, I'll tell you that. With women. Yeah, no, they, they talked about that How unusual that, that is. They were reaping the bountiful harvest. Right. Well, maybe that's because he had that... Uh, maybe, maybe Pharrell will be talking about it tonight. Yeah, that... <laughs> As a matter of fact, in honor of his starting on Sirius, let's send him a gift package. Cute. World is at its warmest for a millennium. How do you like that? The entire northern hemisphere is experiencing a sustained period of warming that is unprecedented. It is absolutely unprecedented in the past millennium. A view of a range of temperature records from tree rings and ice cores to historical to hysterical documents has found that at no time since the 9th century have temperatures been so consistently high. The study, published in the journal Science, found that the late 20th century was the warmest period for the Northern Hemisphere since at least 800 A.D., eclipsing well-known medieval warm period when vines were cultivated successfully in Northern Europe and the Vikings exploited the ice-free seas to colonize Greenland. Remember the Vikings? That's yeah. when we were out there partying on that ship. Timothy Osborne and Keith Briffa, climate scientists from the University of East Anglia, Norwich, analyzed 14 sets of temperature records from America, Europe, and East Asia. Each record covered a relatively wide region, such as northern Sweden or low countries of the Netherlands and Belgium, and extended back at least several centuries. Ten of the 14 records were based on tree ring data, which went back as far as 800 A.D. One measured ice cores from Greenland. One involved historical documents from Europe, and one covered the chemical composition of seashells on the east coast of the U.S. The final set of records came from China and Japan, used a variety of records from ice cores to hysterical documents. Our results show that during the late 20th century, warming effect, uh, affected the entire northern hemisphere and that at no point in the past thousand years has the northern hemisphere experienced the same widespread warming, a war, war, warming warning. The key conclusion was that the 20th century stands out as having unusually widespread warmth compared to all the natural warming and cooling episodes during the past 1,200 years. Climate scientists have in the past found evidence to suggest that the late 20th century was warmer than any time in the past millennium. The study proves it. Now... Guess who's all been out of shape about this? Oh, there's Betsky. Famous coyotes. Famous coyotes. coyotes. Oh, God, I can't stand him. Jesus. I get spilkies just seeing him in that ski nose. Man. He makes Bob Hope look like that uh, French chick with a phony face. A group of 85... Well, she don't have much of a schnoz anymore. A group of 85 evangelical Christian leaders this week backed legislation opposed by the White House to cut carbon dioxide emissions, kicking off a campaign to mobilize religious conservatives to combat global warming. Are you hearing this? I heard it. A bunch of getchkeys, uh, of uh, Christian getchkeys. Go ahead. The group, which included megachurch pastors, Christian college presidents, religious broadcasters, and writers, also unveiled a full-page ad run in the New York Times that already did yesterday, and a TV ad hopes to screen nationally. With God's help, we can stop global warming for our kids, our world, and our Lord, the TV spot be saying. Yeah, do it for Jesus. 
That's right. Save the world for Jesus. The campaign by evangelicals coincided with a call by a leading U.S. think tank for the U.S. to take immediate steps to fight global warming, including working with other nations to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The Pew Center. Well, you know, when, they, when they're bad right. gas emissions, the Pew Center always steps right in. The Pew Center for Global Climate Change said in a report that America has waited too long to seriously tackle the climate change problem and spelled out 15 steps the U.S. could take to reduce emissions it spews as the world's biggest energy consumer and the biggest producer of gas house, uh, greenhouse gases. We're polluting over here. We're doing it big time. And we are number one, baby. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. This is Jimmy Fight Biker, and even though I dumped Jimmy, I still listen to the one to two hour. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And now, another verse of celebrity poetry. Here's a tale of lunacy backed by Scientology. No brain cells left in Tom Cruise's cupboard, for they were stolen by L. Ron Hubbard. When Tom speaks, his mouth it foams, affirming his love for Katie Holmes. Up on the couch, he jumps with glee. He thinks he's sane, remarkably. His mind looks like a Renoir mural, prohibiting Katie an epidural. He says others don't use their brain when it's Tom himself who is insane. He calls Matt Lauer cold and glib when it's he who needs a dribble bib. His lady friend smiles her clueless smile. She's no smarter than bathroom tile. Her eyes too close, her teeth askew. Perhaps she has the avian flu. Feel free if you must to disagree with the teachings of Scientology. But on this, my friend, we can find common ground. Their level of brain damage is profound. The facts are strange, the future shady. For Crazy Tom and Fiance Katie. This has been another verse of celebrity poetry. One o'clock at 560 WQAM. So anyway, I just heard uh, Norm Coleman say balls to the walls in that sent uh, Mickey Brown here. Really? And of course, Norm used to be, our, uh, yeah, he used to be Norma Kent's roommate in college. Really? Yeah, How do you a lot like of that? balls to the wall. Apparently. Here's a, a fax from Rosie says, a few for the poll, Futurama, Arrested Development, Scrubs in 24. Well, let's get them all on there. I got another all one right. for you, too. Can I play the theme? Give you a hint? Sure. Okay. Alfred Hitchcock presents. Alfred Hitchcock presents. Now, they still show those in some of those uh, oldies channels, you know. Yeah, Nick at Night or uh, Right. And whatever. how can you turn those off? Because those were all in a half an hour. Yeah. See, that's the amazing thing about how uncreative television is in a lot of cases today. Although I do like that Supernaturals, though. Where the hell did I see those two actors on? They were interviewing right, some of I haven't seen it yet. Keep it uh, little, 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 little. Well, I mean, you'd like the show. It's good. No, you wouldn't. What? You don't <laughs> like it now? You Get out of here. Last week you told me you saw it and it was a good show. Is that what I said? Yes. I said it was, eh. I said it was okay. Get out of here. I, I said oh, I'd never watch it again. He's, now he's backtracking just because there's a couple of hot-looking young guys on that show right away. Oh, I think it, it's horrible. I think it, I would watch it again. I didn't if it say that. I, I thought it was okay. I just said I wouldn't yeah. watch it again. But George would like that show. It's good. I'll give it a shot. He's into that creepy stuff. He likes that uh, the, the Night Stalker, things like that. Cole Chack. Right. Huh? Cole Sloan. Right. Well, what's wrong with that? What's not to like? Just because, uh, what's the Sam and Dave or whatever they are, Sam and Dean? Yeah. It's very WB. That's all I can say. Uh, I see. Now, don't you watch? Uh, don't you watch uh, Smallville? No. Get out of here. I've never watched an episode of Smallville in my life. Who have I got him? Uh, George watches Smallville. I I did, but I was here. Well, then you'll like the most part. If you like Smallville, Smallville you'll like I don't watch Smallville. Better. I don't watch it anymore. I George watch it because what's your name's on there? No, I, I watched it because because uh, you did. Oh please! I'm telling Crackle, you, please. You watched it because I did. Now you don't watch it because I don't. No, I stopped it actually before you did. I, it just got ponderous. It was the same exactly. crap every week. Exactly. That's all. And I bailed, and but you I know, didn't. And I mean, Tom Welling is a fine young man, and he's uh, according to Norma Kent, gorgeous, and all of a sudden, yeah, that's great. But and that, that's not enough for me, okay? I'm sure that the Emil Hirsch has been a lot of movies that I don't want to see, no matter how good he looks. You know, he don't look that good. He's not. He's not what you think he is. Yeah. Well, oh, by the he way, is, he is what yeah. you think. What? Uh, speaking of uh, Smallville, people tell me that it got way better, but it's too late for me now. Too late for me. I, too late to turn back now. Like Cornelius Brothers and Sister Rose said, too late to turn back now. But there's nothing wrong with Supernatural. It's a it's a good show. And why all of a sudden you're like poo-pooing it? I have no idea. 
I'll it's tell you what. I'll, you know, it's just I'll there. watch Supernaturals and you watch the whole Bear Ass Mountain movie. How's that? I'm all set. We're gonna we're gonna watch. What do you mean you're all set? I'm good. We're gonna watch uh, Bear Ass Mountain together. We're gonna hold hands the whole while. Good, excellent. And I got news for you. That'll be a lot more emotional than whatever happens in that movie because it is. Um, oh, there's. Uh, look at that. You did a heck of a job, Brownie. It's exactly how we'll respond to a. I'll bring the cowboy like hat. Yeah, there's that scene there when they're in that uh, in that hangar in the airport. You bring the. You're chance. doing a heck of a job, Brownie. See, but uh, they're letting him off the hook. They're letting him slide, even though he was totally incompetent and just a numbskull, because they want to catch the bigger fish. See, they want to nail the balls to the wall. Uh, Rick in West Palm says for the poll, Wild Wild West, Sanford and Son, or Columbo, or as he says, Columbo. Do, 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 do. Cute, cute, Rick. Columbo, Sanford and Son, Wild right. Wild West. Christopher Columbo. Christopher Colon. <laughs> Bartolomo Columbus. Hey, here's a whole big long list from Riley. You want it? No. Burn it. It starts with Laverne and Shirley. Burn it. We're not reading your faxes no more, Riley. You're done. Out of control. Get a life. Go find a life, Riley. I have no life. Probably is Rick Riley. Oh, no, it's, it's too creative to be him. Wait till you hear this story from Palo Alto, California. 37-pound woman gives birth. How many pounds? 37. 37. Is that 37 stone? No, pound. I don't wow. know if she's stoned or not. But a woman who is 3 feet tall and weighed 37 pounds before she got pregnant has given birth to her first child, a healthy boy. Eloisa Vasquez, who uses a wheelchair and has had two miscarriages, suffers from type 3 osteogenesis imperfecta, a disorder that makes bone soft and brittle. Osteogenesis imperfecta. Vasquez gained 20 pounds during pregnancy and delivered the 3-pound, 7-ounce baby on January 24th at Stanford University's Lucille Packard Children's Hospital. We took just one day at a time. We had a lot of people praying for us. We just believe, and we have our son here, Vasquez, 38, told the Fresno B. Doctors said they delivered the baby, Timothy, by cesarean section eight weeks before the due date in order to protect the mother's fragile health. Her tiny, distorted body left little room for the fetus to grow. They said Timothy did not inherit his mother's genetic condition. Judging from her son's long fingers and toes, Vasquez said, I think he's going to be a tall boy. Her husband, Roy, said his wife's small stature can be deceiving. She's a strong lady, he said. Well, I bet you Michelle yeah. Williams must be, too. According to the university, one in 25 to 50,000 births are to a mother with osteogenesis imperfecta, and even fewer involve moms with a severe type 3 form. So there's a miracle in California. Oh! Must be Jesus had something to do with it, or at least the Virgin Mary. What do you think? Something. I would think so. 5670560. Oh, we ought to get that line 9 on the air here at least once. QAM, hello. Yeah, I wanted to uh, add something to the, the poll. I just, uh, I just wanted to give you two names of shows, and then I'll... Uh... Have you relayed a message to Neil? Okay. Um, I don't know if it counts or not, but like the Three Stooges, I know there were shorts for films before they were ever on TV, but. All right. No. All right. What about um, Aqua Teen Hunger Force? Okay. Okay. Aqua Teen Hunger Force? All right. Okay, I'll pass it along. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, Neil, uh, somebody said Aqua Teen uh, Hunger Force. All right. We'll do it. Got it? We got it. What about uh, Supernatural? Oh, that just came on. I'm the WB, and of course, uh, Josh is militant. He hates the WB. I thought it was I have no idea why. why. Well, what network is that uh, Seventh uh, Heaven on? I, I realize yeah, that's, that's it. Done. That's it. What? The, the WB. WB. You didn't like the uh, Seventh Heaven? I like Jessica Biel. I don't like that. Well, oh, there you go. Okay. I never saw an episode of it. I, there were some people on there I liked, too, and then they got uh, ugly and uh, they got yeah. Jason Gedrick syndrome. We well, all the young like cop on that show. Well, I don't know what happened. And somebody hit him with the ugly stick. God. Holy moly. And then you're giving me a song to dance about, oh, well, guys uh, are better looking when they're... I don't even want to go back, back through that it's again. It's not my opinion. Uh, you, you know something? Yeah, and I, it is your opinion. No. It is usual. No. Way, way, You don't want to talk wrong. about it because you're wrong, and I can say, okay. I can prove it right, but... You How are you going to prove it right? Give me an example. Tell me one guy All of these women's... No, no, no. I, I don't care about women's magazine. About it that, constantly. That, that, in other words, that proves because... Listen. How about Lyle? I love it. Listen. Huh? Men's skin is thicker. We wrinkle later in life. Are you our talking about foreskin again or what? Our, see, our skin droops down our faces later at a later age than women's. That's a fact. It's Maybe yours opinion. is drooping. All right. That's it. I'm done. It has nothing to do with your skin drooping. Okay, that's, that's, that's not exactly why people become why you ugly. Age. No, what the hell are we, talk, what are we talking that? about here? Okay. Huh? What are we talking about here? I don't know. Just because it's you don't just, like guys just, that look over just, the age I of 18. Just, that's it. What? You don't like guys that look over the age of 18. So anybody what 19 are you or talking older about? Those guys on Supernaturals are 18? 
maybe the Sam 17. and Dave and 16. Sam and Dean and Jan and Dean. What are you talking about? That's another thing about that show. They're they're like 35 and they're supposed to be like. <laughs> they're <one>. not 35. <laughs> they're not. But television's always done that. You know, first yeah. of all, they're not 35. Okay, they're like in their early 20s. The one guy's like in his mid 20s, the older one. The other one's like about 23, 24. You you better start learning your ages, Mister, or you just better start sticking to women. Don't worry. I, I know. There yeah. you go. <laughs> no broke back. No. Uh, All these experts. Me. Believe me, if I thought there was any chance you might, there might be some possibility you would enjoy any aspect of it, from uh, uh, Michelle Williams to, um, on, on all fours or whatever, believe me, you don't want to do it. Michelle Williams on all fours, eh? Mm, okay, go ahead. <laughs> I'd love to. You will, you will take that DVD I'll get, I'll get and a running start. you will heave it out the window. I guarantee you that. It will be out there on I-95. FCC Commission Chairman Kevin Martin, you fairy, stepped up pressure on cable TV providers to sell channels separately, releasing a report yesterday showing the movie would cut prices by up to 13%. The FCC study reverses the findings of a 2004 report commissioned by former Chairman Michael Powell, you fairy, and supports Martin's push for cable providers such as Time Warner and Comcast to offer a la carte pricing. Martin could use this study to continue to use the bully pulpit to push for a la carte, said Christopher Stern, an analyst for Medley Global Advisors, an investment research firm. The report is a setback for cable providers, which have offered measures such as family programming packages to avoid having to sell individual channels. I wonder if Pharrell's on the uh, serious package. The study may feel... The study may fuel a legislative drive to mandate a la carte pricing sought by activist groups as a way to lower prices and give viewers more control over channels in their homes. Uh, oh, yeah, you got to get the WB off your cable. Too many hot-looking young people on those shows. And Josh, you don't want to see that. Senator Ted Stevens, the Commerce Committee chairman, Alaska Republican, who said last month he didn't plan to consider a la carte legislation, said yesterday he might reexamine the issue. Cable TV prices could fall from 3 to 13 percent under three of four a la carte options studied in the report released in Washington yesterday. Well, great. How can we censor? How can we bring you under our thumb? How can we force the South Park people to put those bleeps in, even on the cable? You know? Oh, by the way, because uh, you made a good point the other day, we yes. were talking about that. FX uh, shows the shield. Which is a regular cable thing. Right. We use every Good. word, and I do mean every. Let's hear word. it for FX. Let's hear it. Oh! And isn't it interesting that FX is Fox? I think the F word is the only one that they leave out. But boy, isn't they that use the, the F same word? network yes. that uh, yes. isn't that the same people Rupert Murdoch? They use their, they use the print media and they use Fox News to like print all the right wing propaganda That's they right. can, and they make all the money to fund that operation by putting on all those sexy Fox shows, and then right. of course FX, like you were telling me, he's an evil genius. Yeah, Rupert Murdoch, mm -hmm. your mama. Uh, though you've seen every episode many times, what TV series will you never get tired of watching? That's our poll question. Today. Good question, I think. One out of 12. One out of 12. Oh, get out of here. Oh, I know. What? And this is just a joke, otherwise he'll put it on there. <laughs> Pluck your magic twanger, Sandy. Or is that Pluck your magic twanger? We'll do something with it. Oh, there you go. Do it again. As long as I live, I'll never forget that morning that I called and woke up Luke Halpin at home on that Zeta morning show. I was, he was he was good about it. Did he flip her? He flipped her or over. He said, "I'm not." She said, "I'm not Michelle Williams. What do you think this is?" And he said, "I'm not Heath Ledger either, but just cut it out." <laughs> <laughs> oh. I mean, that, that's about as subtle as an elephant jumping in the middle of that scene. You know, when when he it's just. <laughs> No, not really. I mean, it's just so obvious. Why don't they? Why don't they just, uh, you know, put a big sign on there, put a big uh, message on the screen? Heath Ledger's into, you know, uh, rectum that. God, and that rape scene where he's like uh, raping uh, uh, the other one, and, and uh, 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 huh? Even Mo would be embarrassed by that. Seinfeld two forty three, way ahead of the rest, and you got you can also have it. More power to you. Just like uh, what was the one on yesterday's poll? Oh, Blazing Saddle. Was a, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Simpsons 128. Star Trek 103. All in the Family 92. South Park 81. MASH 75. Chia's 31. Tom Jicka likes Chia's. Uh, I Love Loosely's got... About 30, man. Hawaii 5020. Cook 'em Dano. Kirby Enthusiasm 19. Batman 18, 19. Friends 19. Family Guy 18. Get it on there now. Soprano 17, Law Order 17, NYPD Blue 16, The Honeymooners 15, Monty Python's Flying Circus 14, Fawlty Towers 13, Sex in the City 10, Andy Griffith Show 8, Green Acres 7, Miami Vice 6, 6 for Mary Tyler Moore, Married with Chillins, 5 for the Jeffersons, 
Kojak has four. Three for the Shield and the Beverly Hillbillies and Cannon. Hogan's Heroes got a pair. Mission Impossible got two. How can that only have two? I God, that's such a great show. Huh? What do you want? Uh, Aunt Aqua Teen uh, Hunger Force won. Mikhail's Navy won. Monk won. The Odd Couple won. And none, none for Sanford and Son. Wild Wild West, 24, Scrubs, Arrest Development, Futurama, Soap, L.A. Law, 77, Sunset Strip, Prisoner, and the Partridge Family all got the big. Oh! So I guess uh, the guy with the eyes didn't vote yet. Oh, just wait till he gets to the library. Oh, yeah. He's going to be uh, leaning on that Partridge Family. 14 past 1 at 560 WQAM. When you're shopping for shoes, head immediately. Make a beeline for Brandy Shoes in Pompano Beach to make sure you get the most comfortable fit in your favorite style of shoes at an unbeatable price. We're talking about the top names in the shoe business, not off-brands, which so many of these marginal shoe stores are famous for. Brandy's carries the biggest selection of all the major brands, like Rockport, Florsheim, Echo, Mephisto, SAS, New Balance, and all the others. They'll make dang sure you get a perfect customized fit of your favorite comfort shoe. Just ask for Arnie. He'll take good care of you. And Brandy's even specialized in wide widths as well. So no matter where you live in South Florida, if you're going to take good care of those Tootsies, Brandy's is worth the trip. For comfort, style, fit, value, and selection, always think Brandy Shoes. And you'll find Brandy's at 1290 North Federal Highway in Pompano Beach. They're open every day of the week, Monday through Saturdays till 9, and every Sunday till 5. And this week is a great time to buy SAS shoes at Brandy's. Take 20 to 40 bucks off the retail price of all great SAS men's and women's styles this week. So be sure to get into Brandy's or do your shoe shopping right online on their website, brandyshoes.com. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. All right. Who's the monkey that's more fun than a barrel of humans? I had a little too much to drink that night. <laughs> Who never says a word? Well, I've... I, I, in, 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 um, uh, it's Curious George. 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 I'm George W. Bush. <laughs> the world's most famous monkey is coming to theaters. My greatest responsibility as president. Welcome to the world of Curious George. <laughs> Drinking all the time. <laughs> <laughs> What am I going to do with you? I don't know. <laughs> 118 at 560 WQM. So do I know uh, my age or what? Uh, Jared Padalecki plays Sam on uh, Supernatural. Okay. 35? And what, what did I tell you how old he is? And you're telling me 35. He was born July 19, 1982 in San Antonio, Texas. That makes him 23. What did I say? What did I tell you? I don't know. I was, uh, that was exactly the number I said. 23. Trace. Very good. Huh? I can spot. Uh, believe me. I can Why? spot it. That's that's the younger one. The other guy's like forty. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you one thing: for a guy who doesn't like that show, you sure got a lot of information. You know, a lot of information for somebody that can't stand that show. You got like a forty-year-old like and a twenty-two-year-old sleeping in the yeah. same room together. Good night, brother. Yeah, that's like the only part of that show that you know something that never even crossed my mind. That's the only thing that enters your mind is because they're sleeping in different beds in the same room. That there must be something going on. Uh -huh. You know something? If there is, I want to see it. Well, you know, at night... Believe me, I'd rather, I'd rather see that than Humpback Mountain, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Holy moly. God, what a piece of garbage. <laughs> Seriously, that, that could be the worst movie I've seen in ten years. Wow. I, I, just, I, I can't even begin to tell you how ponderous and boring and monotonous it is. It's just garbage. But other than that, it's great. WQAM, hello. Hi, can someone tell me what happened to Mel? What happened to him? Yeah. His uh, muskrat ran away from home. Oh, you know, got the butt, uh, yeah, look, they, they paid him off to go away. His contract ended on March 10th, and they said, here's some money, and he said, okay, I'll take it, and goodbye. He's uh, that's gone. correct. That is correct. Okay. Do, 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 do. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah, that was one of his crowd, no question about that, the colostomy bag crowd. 5670560, oh, pound 560, the Verizon singular wireless line. Oh, let's get Defoe back on here with some of that old corny stuff, huh? I mean, he's only half Jewish. Yeah. WQAM, hello. You miserable son of a bitch. Uh, I, don't know. Well, I haven't heard from him in uh, five minutes. WQAM, hello. Hitler! <laughs> back to back. <laughs> that must have been Gilbert and his boyfriend. Maybe they got the same routine as the other two are going to Oh, you know what? I never played? That I promised, speaking of uh, That's right. maniacs? Huh? I never played this. Here's Oakland Park. Hello. Yes, is this Mr. Rogers? Speaking. Mr. Rogers. Uh, Reverend Jones here, and uh, are you oh, another a, another phony Reverend? Yeah. You're having a, a controversial show today on a callers what? from the past. What is it? You're having a controversial uh, show on callers from the past. No, we're not talking about callers from the past. You're gay. Well, bits, bits that you're doing. 
Sir, what are you talking about? You're, you're playing old bits? No. No, I'm not. Well, I, we, we had a call a while back, and I guess you did a tape, and you made we, some type of a, a cart on it. I guess that's what they're telling me. And we discussed not playing it we, on the air. What are you What are you talking about? The, the part that gave bits, sir. That was one of my... There's I, a... Yes, sir. Yeah. We'd appreciate to not play that. You're gay. I thought gay. you received the letter. Did you receive the letter, sir? You're gay. You're gay. Did you receive the letter, sir? You're gay. You're gay. Sir, you're gay. Did you receive the letter, sir? You're gay. There'll be a lawsuit. You're gay. Sir, you're gay. No, you're gay, sir. You're gay. What was he trying to say? You're gay. Oh. <laughs> or maybe he was just trying to say... You fair. Could have been that. Twenty-two past one. I got to admit, that's uh, you oh, that's hysterical. On that. Right, that is hysterical. If he would have just died immediately after that, then it would have been a blessing for the whole human no, race. No, that's not good enough. No, I understand. Don't quit while you're ahead. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the Verizon and Singular wireless line. We still haven't had one person. And of course, in this crowd, I predicted that at the beginning. I don't really want to talk about it no more. But uh, that awful Humpback Mountain movie. There's not anybody defending it. There's not anybody who admits to seeing it. Nobody, even that lady that called before, even though she said that when she was talking about uh, Michael Ankeen and making love with Kate Jackson or making love with uh, Harry Hamlin, that uh, she hadn't seen that humpback either. Seen a humpback <laughs> whale. And I remember working in Sarasota in 73, there was the old humpback bridge. WQAM, hello. Wonderful call. That was WQAM, hello. Mia, what's going on? He was crying. Yes, sir. I got it on with uh, Aaron Gill and uh, Patty and uh, Annie with a camel toe. What, what, now, what did he just say? I didn't understand any of those words. Well, well something in Patty and anyone with a, uh, yeah. I, I have no idea what that man just said. Man, your people and their accents, man. You can't make out a word of it. Yeah, my people and their accents. Your, your no. folks, man. All those Middle speak, Easterners. Speak of the English. Speak of the English, okay? Give it a try. It works like a miracle, man. Speak of the English. Then they will fear you. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, hey, sir. thanks for watching uh, Bullfrack for us through, through your queer eye, because there was no way I was going to watch it. Oh, please. And I'm glad no, you I... admitted it was crap. Admitted? Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm militant about it. It was the worst garbage it. ever made. Now, let me ask you something. My Christian friends say if you watch a gay movie, I'll turn gay. Oh, yeah, that makes you yeah. gay, yeah. Now, if you're gay and you watch the gay movie, you must be straight, so let's hit Yeah, they made me straight now. I'm going out chasing chicks this afternoon in the uh, Eaton Center, yeah. It's like a double negative. Right. Five six seven oh five. His Christian friends. I don't have any Christian friends. I mean, not in the sense that he would say, you know, Christian. You know what I mean? Right. I avoid like the plague people who would like to, you know, put me in an oven. Right. Five six seven oh five sixty. And for a multitude of reasons, not just yeah. Oh yeah, a whole bunch of reasons. Like what's the point? WQAM. Hello. QAM. WQAM. Hello. That was uh, Alan Brown. Yeah. Now, isn't it interesting how I guess uh, they return to the scene of the crime just right. desperate, oh, absolutely yeah. he desperate. Said a fax I have no right. Today. I beg your pardon. He sent a fax in. Really? Yeah. Saying something for the poll or something. I threw it right away without. Uh, oh, you some know. others. You remember? You remember its name? Well, he signed it Jamba. <laughs> liar. Yeah. You know, I'm wondering about that Jamba, a real liar. Make no mistake about that. Speaking of uh, New Orleans and them chocolate folks. Well, you know, that's one thing. At least at least they're consistent. The Democrats don't care about them. People are Republicans don't either. Just the Democrats put on a good show. Line nine, one more shot today. QAM, hello. Hey, Neil, and you wonder why the education system in Florida sucks? Look at the Broward County School Board. Get your head out of your ass, you jackasses. Amen. Now, what did they do, the Broward County School Board? Don't tell me uh, that they did the August 9th thing. No, I don't, I don't know what they're doing, but uh, they are jackasses. Well, we know that. That goes without saying. And then as soon as the public started, like, getting revolting about that whole uh, August 9th thing, oh, well, August 14th on a Monday sounds so much better as opposed to having all you people curtail your summer vacation because we're too stupid to know how the hell to do anything right. Yeah, well, there's no question about that. See, you can't complain about Florida education because there isn't any. Trust me. WQAM, hello. Neil. Yep. So I met Josh at the Panther game. Yeah. And uh, I got so excited when I saw him mm -hmm. because he had this shaved blonde hair. Yeah. And he had these tinted glasses and this really long Afghan coat. Mm -hmm. and all the beads and all the gear. <laughs> <laughs> that was me, all right. Got you down, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's like all the gear right sounds now. mighty queer, I'll tell you that right now. Man. 
Right? No wonder he's no wonder he's not going to the hockey games anymore. <laughs> he's got most oh. of it covering his rear. He found a fan. Well, isn't that nice? <laughs> Maybe you can go up there in the woods at Humpback Mountain uh, with that guy. Do a little camping out. You or maybe you just go to find a motel and sleep in the same room together like uh, Sam and Dean. You can borrow my chaps, all right? In fact, wasn't that song by Sam and Dave? Hold on. It's 26 past 1 at 560 WQM when it comes to mattresses. Speaking of which, better you sleep it on, Sam. See, I would watch that show. I missed it last week or two. It was supernatural. If they, if they were sleeping in the same bed, I would definitely would not miss that. I would TiVo it. I would, like, uh, fry it into my screen. And the show, too. When it comes to mattresses, a lot of gimmicks out there. The latest are sleep numbers, otherwise known as air mattresses. They're only warranted in full for two years. They squeak, they pop, they can lose their setting during the night, and they cost a fortune, an arm and four legs. If you really want a high-quality brand name mattress that will last you for years and years, then do the smart thing. Just sit there on your fat, pimply ass and make one easy call to my good friends at Dollar Mattress, 1-800-MATTRESS. When you call 1-800-MATTRESS, you'll get no runarounds, no showroom shenanigans. I love that expression, showroom shenanigans. Just factory direct prices and the best brands you know, trust, and love. When you call 1-800-MATTRESS, you'll choose from Florida's biggest inventory of all the top brands. Sealy, Serta, Simmons, King Coil, Tempur-Pedic, Stearns, and Foster Hewitt. Already for same-day delivery at prices lower than the so-called big-name chain stores, even during these supposed big sales. Call 1-800-MATTRESS. Have the bed you want delivered, the date and time you want, and you still pick that two-hour delivery window when it's convenient for you. 11 to 1, noon to 2. 2, 1 to 3, 245 to 445, etc. I've been a satisfied customer for years. Most of the QMers are too, and you will be, I guarantee it. So make that easy call right now, and you can be sleeping like a baby as soon as tonight. Call 1 800 Mattress or log on to their website, mattress.com. That's 1 800 M A T T R E S. Leave off the last S because it stands for Sam. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. Floridians, dumb as dirt. Oh! Yeah. I like to go fishing inside the shower store. Slip side as I go fishing and slap her off the wall. I bend over, over, try to aim it at my face. But I'm much too small, my tiny feet are away. I use the trickle down theory before I start to scrub. I rinse off my wee wee with a pair of looper gloves. The wind on my toes makes me feel so wet and wild. He needed the sleep when I paint myself in fire. Aren't you glad that I am style? When April showers come my way, I like a golden shower. And squirt, squirt, and spray. Well, thank God Jake Gyllenhaal had his loofah up there in the uh, mountains, I'll tell you that. That's right. Kind of scrub that whole deal off. 132 at 560 WQAM. Don't forget, Curtis, come, come up to just move it along. Move it right along like that bitch said before. Move it along. I do want to mention this again, though, before we leave, because here's something people can do over the weekend to keep them off the streets since we ain't got no more football for a long time. Speaking of that, what are the sports people going to talk about now? Oh, probably the Football. Olympics. Oh, whoa, man. You going to watch any of the Olympics, Josh? I sure hope not. Probably not. No. You're going to watch the luge. Maybe. It depends. The luge? like the two-man luge best. Oh, no. And the, and the wrestling? Yeah, oh, wait, that's, that's not the wrong. Uh, that's the wrong Brokeback the Mountain uh, luge. The, the Humpback Mountain yeah, yeah. Uh, version. No, we're not going to be watching the Olympics on this show, so talk to somebody else about it who cares. We don't care. I do care about the Betsky story, though. That's interesting. I'd love to see him go down. Oh, man. Right slide right down the mountain. Really? I didn't think you liked it. Uh, Zillow.com. That's what I wanted to mention again. Just right. a click of your mouse. Uh, that's one of the most, and, and they don't want anything from you. You don't have to, like, log on. You don't have to, like, uh, give yeah, any money. Yeah, I thought money. it was a scam when I first read about it. Like, you got to, you know, create an account, that kind no, of thing. That, no, that's why there's so many people. That's why they had a, they disabled the thing when it first came out is because it was so well, popular. What? And people are going on there and they're thinking, like, hey, oh, look at this. They're, and, and you get so much information about your house and your neighborhood and, uh, you know, all this other stuff. How much it's worth right now? How much it was worth a week ago? Circus? How much next? It's going to be worth next? Tishabov. 
Well, that story about Tisha Bob yesterday, that sent me into orbit. That just uh, didn't More than me. you ever wanted to know about Crystal Ball. Yeah. Cologne. Cologne. While criticizing Senator Dianne oh. Feinstein for supporting President Bush's war policies, Cindy Sheehan said yesterday that she won't run against the popular California Democrat because she can be more effective as a vocal anti-war activist. She's finally got her thumb right on it. Nice going, Cindy. Leave poor Diane alone. I, as an American and the mother of a hero, pledge to do what I can as a citizen to win the occupation of Iraq, she told reporters. I'm not running against Senator Feinstein, but I will continue to be a thorn in her side and a thorn in the side of any representative who's not stridently working for peace. She blasted Feinstein for giving Bush the green light to invade an innocent country when she voted in October 2002 for that resolution authorizing the Iraq war and for continuing to vote to finance that illegal war and illegal occupation. It's not enough to criticize the president's policies while you're handing him more money to fund his policies. It's like giving an addict more money to buy drugs when you'd like him to quit, she said. Well, I tell you, she's good. With or without Hugo Chavez, she's still good. Oh, no, she was down there with Hugo Chavez. She's a commie pinko. She probably likes Fidel. Uh, okay. I forget. See, at times I forget who I'm talking to. All right. It's not Florida, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, Hugo Chavez and Fidel, they rub their beards together. Wait till you hear this story. We could use Josh's assistance in this story. It's a long time because Emerald Coast isn't talking about simp lately, but this story, it's, that's what it's all about. Okay? All right. Jury finds flying See you. did not cause man's death. Mineola, New York, the See you. didn't do it. A Benihana chef may have tossed a hot See you. at a customer five years ago, but a Nassau jury decided yesterday it's not the restaurant's fault. The man wrenched his neck that night and later died. Right, he should have caught it in his mouth like everyone I'm does. I'm dying over here. Well, you know, you say that jokingly, but evidently that's what was uh, the whole idea of this thing. Right, I've been to Benihana. See, I, I have too. In fact, is the one still there on the 79th Street Causeway by where we used to work, Benihana? Sure, I know. Yeah. When I go into a restaurant, and it's just like, and as much as I love them, the macaroni grill, mm -hmm. as much as I like the place, I don't want to see anybody get up on a table and do old man river with those big old shoes. You know, I, I don't want to see that. What if they're wooden Dutch That shoes? old man, I, I, I want to have a nice meal, you know. If I want entertainment, I'll go to a place to be entertained. If I want a meal, I'll go to a restaurant. So I don't want like a, a, you know, a whole song and a dance and a circus and then throwing knives around. It took the jury less than two hours to decide that Benihana, a Japanese restaurant chain famous for its theatrical table side, and by the way, also famous for giving you little teeny tiny amounts of food, was not responsible for the death of Jerry Colitis. Oh, I'm sorry, Coli, uh, Coli, uh, Coli, how do you say his name? Colitis. Colitis, 47 of Old Brookville. They also threw out the jumbo $16 million award that Colitis widow Jacqueline, 47, had requested. Was I wonder if it was script? a jumbo. I was just going to ask that if it was a jumbo. See you. Several juries said after hearing four weeks of testimony, it seemed likely that Coleidis, who uh, was at a Muncie Park Benihana in January 2001 for his son's ninth birthday, was asking a chef to throw a See you. his way so he could catch it in his mouth. See, and you're just making a joke about that, Mr. Know-it-all. I wasn't making a joke. That's exactly it, the idea. It wasn't Benihana's fault, said juror Jim Martin, 62. Jacqueline Coleidis uh, said her husband hadn't asked for the food to be tossed his way. The chef decided to start throwing things, and no matter how many times we told him not to, to stop, he wouldn't stop. I'm so disappointed in the jury, she said. Money is money, but I still don't have a husband. His kids still don't have a father. Coletta said to Benny Hanna, chef, first hit her stepson, then her brother-in-law, burning them both. She said the chef then threw another piece at Jerry Colitis, causing him to jerk his head out of the way. That night, Colitis began to feel pain in his neck, his widow said. He underwent neck surgery at NYU Medical Center in Manhattan in June 2001. On November 21, Colitis checked into St. Francis Hospital in Roslyn with a 104-degree fever, said his attorney, Andre Ferenzo of Roslyn. And the following day, he died. That's it. The cause of the death was sepsis, a severe infection. He had sepsis. Benihana lawyer Charles Connick of Mineola said Colitis' death had nothing to do with his Benihana dinner. Furthermore, he said Colitis wanted the chef to throw the See you. toward him. It made no sense that a chef working for tips would purposely defy his customer's wishes. I think we showed that he was trying to pull his head back. He said he was trying to catch the... See you. But Forenzo said he couldn't believe the jury would not acknowledge the chef's dangerous behavior. He said the restaurant's head chef, I didn't know they had a head chef, admitted on the stand that his staff liked to win tips and thrill customers by throwing food for people to catch. He was aware of what was going on, Forenzo said. He had advised his chefs that it was dangerous. Dangerous throwing those See him. around. I like that. Oh, he well. Sepsis and he died. And she evidently looking for some cash, but she didn't get it. Too bad. You lose, honey. That will teach you to go to Benihana. 
They can throw food at me all day long. I don't care. I'll catch it. Well, how about John the Baker throwing food at you? Let's do oh, that. Oh, boy. Tonight. I am so... So what do they bring you? Just sloppy sausage today? Well, no, they, they got all kinds of great pizza and Italian favorites, lasagna, chicken parm, peel and peppers, cannelloni, oversized hot and cold subs, uh, the best garlic rolls that are the size of uh, Kimbo Camper's head. And all of these things. Yeah. We had the sloppy they, sausage in here, though, and some garlic rolls, too. Mm. Top, 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 top. All for them. Yeah, it was. So try all of these things. In fact, they got the menu here. They've got just a uh, almost endless menu. A fantastic Italian goodies. Pasta Alfredo with grilled chicken or with grilled... See him. Yeah. <laughs> he was talking uh, into a... Well, I'll tell you one thing. You're sure making up for lost time today, aren't you? <laughs> yes, I Good am. God. Got baked macaroni, dishes of all kinds, eggplant. Oh, brother, beautiful menu. The prices are very, very modest. And John's been around. John the Baker, he's famous in town for a great family-style Italian food. Very modest prices. And he's been doing it in South Florida for a zillion years. So stop by for all these great goodies, especially the sloppy sausage sub. Then they'll know that we sent you, right, when they go and say, Hey, John, how about some of your sloppy sausage? John the Baker's got two locations for you for takeout in Pembroke Pines. Call 954-431-4315. You'll find them there at 12592 Pines Boulevard. 954-431-4315. And the new John the Baker is just opened at 8835 Sterling Road. That's the corner of Sterling and Pine Island in prestigious Cooper City. For takeout there, call 954 954- Two five two zero zero nine one nine five four two five two zero zero nine one. Get sloppy and get some sloppy sausage to a John the Baker. This is Neil Rogers. This is five sixty feet AM. Our stopping action continues with a new season of 24 on Fox. Renegade CTU agent Jack Bauer is called back to action. Agent Bauer, it's CTU. We need you. Oh, crap. Now what? A group of terrorists are planning to assassinate the president by launching a nuclear warhead into Washington, D.C. while releasing a toxic nerve gas that melts people's faces. That's it? Yeah. Isn't there anyone else you guys can call to save the world? I mean, haven't I been through enough? My wife's been murdered, my daughter's been caught in a bear trap, my girlfriend dumped me, and my entire body's been beaten within an inch of its life. There's more bad news. Now what? Your third cousin's best friend's college roommate was kidnapped by the terrorists. No! 24 is back on Fox. Will there be evil double agents involved? Yes. How about satellite tracking devices? Yes. Flagrant protocol violations? Yes. How about mortally wounded thugs who whisper cryptic information before losing consciousness? Of course. Well, can you at least get rid of that annoying ticking clock? No. Uh, It's 24 with the annoying clock. Mondays on Fox. Yeah, that's what uh, Scott McCullough told the mayor of Los Angeles. who had just watched that right episode of 24. He'd known about that uh, terror threat in L.A. 144. How do you like that Jim Clancy on there? I see an international saying, oh, gee, uh, you know, why would a president have to uh, call the mayor of Los Angeles? Right. Have you ever heard anything so insipid, so idiotic in your life? Yeah, other times on CNN. So herniating, so desperate. Right. Man, I'll tell you, they must be passing around buckets of money over there. All their shills. Sure the shill network. Uh-huh. In a situation room with Wolf Blitzkrieg, who talks like some kind of a moron, man, like he's talking to a kindergarten class. In West Virginia. God, what an idiot. Oh, there's Kara Phillips. He needs to die right now. Hundreds of stations under investigation by the FCC and Paola investigation. How do you like this? Thank God we don't play no music. Right. Get the heat off of us for a while. Well, there's that undercover kitty. Honors New York. Yeah, kitty, 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 kitty. Oh, sorry. I'll tell you one thing. One nice thing about a little cat, they fit in the microwave so neat, you know? Yeah, they do. God. Even the small ones. Although they do splatter around, make a mess. Though ABC News has delayed airing its primetime live story on Elliot Spitzer's payroll investigation, it is revealed that the FCC is now investigating hundreds of radio stations around the country as part of the scandal. Absolutely correct, sir. Oh, my God. FCC Commissioner Jonathan Edelstein told ABC News, the FCC staff is working with voluminous evidence right now. It's a complicated and wide-ranging investigation. He added, this is a potentially, this potentially is the most widespread and flagrant violation of FCC rules in the history of American broadcasting. We have never seen evidence of such a systematic betrayal of the responsibility of broadcasters, he said. How do you like that? Mm-hmm. Wow, wow, wow. How do you like that? Wow. 
<laughs> Spitzer himself told ABC wow. News we have people in suits coming in with documents rather than cash payments under the table to a DJ. Documents. I see, like stocks and bonds. Edelstein threatens the loss of station's licenses through this investigation, saying, I can't believe that, well, we don't have to worry about that. We don't have one. I can't believe that radio stations are putting their licenses at risk. It seems to me they thought the FCC was asleep, and they shot someone in front of a policeman. The policeman is obligated to act when evidence is so clear. He added, while it's highly unusual for the FCC to pull licenses on first violation, depending on the severity, that is one option that's available to us. These are criminal matters as well, he said. How do you like that? And Mrs. Gretzky said, don't bet on it. Can you believe it? She bet a half a million dollars in the last uh, six weeks and 75 grand on the Super Bowl and then a separate bet on the coin toss. That, that bet has got problems. That's huh? wild. Yeah. I mean, usually, okay, I, I shouldn't say that because being a Woodbine person, being a casino person, I, I really shouldn't say that, that women don't have chronic gambling problems. That, that's right. totally untrue. Right. Because I, I know some women out there, you want to cry. They're losing. I mean, of course, I'm sure their husbands haven't got the foggiest idea. They got all their credit cards maxed out. They're just they're up to their armpits in debt. But generally speaking, I mean, when you're talking about the really big, the high rollers in gambling, it's usually the men. You know, mm -hmm. like like the humper, <laughs> for example. Commissioner Edelstein revealed that he's been in regular contact with Spitzer lately and wants the FCC to handle the investigation, as opposed to just Spitzer in the state of New York. We have a responsibility to get to the bottom of this. It's important that the FCC does its job and not let the states do it for us, he said. ABC News also spoke to a number of industry stars at the Grammys earlier this week about payola, with none of them especially surprised by the news. Honestly, payola has existed since the beginning of the music business, so it's not like some brand new thing that never happened before, said Alicia Keys. Jessica Simpson's music has been mentioned in Spitzer's documents. Oh, yeah, I can't imagine why. Can you? I can't imagine. Even if they paid us, we wouldn't play that. Her father manager, Joe Simpson, told ABC News, all I, all I know is we worked really hard to get the record on, and it was as honest as I could be. Whatever happened above us, you, I have no answer for. Whatever happened above us. Who's? Bubba's. Whatever happened above her, too. Oh. Okay, said That's Bubba. what Nick Lachey was saying. I'm not so sure about him anyway. You know? I don't well, know about that whole deal. I think he turned 24 or something, didn't he? Nick Lachey? Get out of here. He's like about 30. What are you talking about? Nick Lachey? Yeah, I don't know how old he is. You don't even know who the hell that is. You're right. I don't. Well, I played that music, man. They had some good music. Yeah. 98 degrees. <laughs> yeah, about 98 <laughs> copies. Get out of here. They were for all the boy bands. They were the only ones that could Are sing. Me? Yes. I'm going to tell Joe Abel before that lunch on uh, on Monday to make sure you eat trafe, and then you'll burn in hell, you and Gary Sarner. By the way, bring back Gary Sarner or Doggy back and make sure it's like a bacon cheeseburger. There you go. 98 degrees. I told you. And that's, that's the reason they uh, figured out so fast, is they could really sing. Oh, that's that the Julio one, man. I remember that video where he was, like, emoting, and they got those tattoos on. And, of course, uh, her, her uh, nasty attitude and stupidity rubbed off on him. So the hell with both of them, Jessica and Nick. Because now we got Brad and uh, Angelina. Brangelina. My I'm favorite sorry, breakfast Brand. cereal. Brangelina, yeah. That's not a good song. Why would you play those, that? Those, those are the two that I have because those are the hits. Well, get rid of it. Kill Please, it. Happily. They did a lot of good stuff. 98 Degrees. You, you're almost as bad as your partner in crime over there is telling me that Sam on uh, Supernatural is 85 years old. Pretty pretty soon they're going to be sleeping uh, in uh, nursing homes together. <laughs> Just yeah. wait. That's that's where the season's going. Hey, yeah, hey. that's where the season's going. They're hey. going to be sleeping in a double bed in a nursing home. In the nursing home, the beds are on wheels. so they can. And put the most I've seen here. part is they're going to be sharing the same bag. How do you like that? The same bedpan. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. You can't get much closer than that. That's that real brotherly love. <laughs> you got to do it ass to ass, though. Now that you mention that, I think that's next week's episode <laughs> on the WB. Though you've seen Eric. <laughs> Did you watch that? <laughs> so you've seen. <laughs> oh man, where did you come up with that, Jennifer Connelly? Jesus. So you've seen the well, many episodes. You've seen it all the time. I can't even read this. <laughs> Jesus, what word God, is what a grotesque thought. Josh will never. Josh is going to go home and take four showers right now. He feels so feel unclean. unclean. Yeah, yeah, unclean. What TV series will you never get tired of watching? Seinfeld, two fifty two. What is wrong from you people, man? 11.20, that's not too bad. 11.20 KDKA. What that's 10.20. What's 11.20? That's going to be. I don't know. Is it KMOX? I, we go through this all the time. I think KMOX is, it might be. Those are the days, man, when radio used to be worth whole, uh, have owning. 
Seinfeld, 253. Simpsons, 134. Star Trek, 112. All in the Family, 95. Boy, they usually do better than that, don't they? What the hell happened to them? Maybe we've seen them too many well, we, times you now. You do uh, just a comedy. They always win. I beg your pardon? Oh. All in the Family, 95. South Park, 82. MASH, 77. I Love Loosely, 32. Cheers, 31. Law and Order, 21. 21 for Hawaii, 50. Friends, 21. Curb Your Enthusiasm, 20. I think whoever invented Friends and Joey, they all ought to be taken out right away. Family Guy, 19. I told you we'd put it on there. Sopranos, 19. Batman, 19. See, Batman doing pretty good. Mm-hmm. Must have been those tights. Faulty Tower, 17. The Honeymooners, 17. Monty Python's Flying Circus, 16. NYPD Blues, 16. Sex in the City, 10. Nine for Green Acres. Married with Children's got eight. And Miami Vice got eight. And The Andy Griffith Show got eight. And Blind Date got eight. six. Oh. Six. Mary Tyler Moore Show, six. Sanford and Son, five. Hogan's Heroes, five. The Jeffersons, only five. Boy, that's, that's kind of scary. Beverly Hillbillies, four. Kojak, four. Wild Wild West, three. 24 got three. The Shield, three. Cannon got three. Uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force, two. Scrubs, two. Mission Impossible, two. Is that Lester Scruggs and Earl Flat? Yes, it is. Wait. McHale's Navy won. Soap won. Monk won. <laughs> the Prisoner won. The Odd Couple won. And no votes for arrested development. They can't get arrested in a panty raid. It's because it sucks. Oh. Futurama. L.A. Law. L.A. Law. Are they, are they re-showing that? No. Once through is enough for that. What are you talking no, about? I understand, but I mean, are they re-showing it? They must be because... Uh, not that I know of. Because that would be like putting Knott's Landing on it. They're not showing it again. Oh, they did for a while, though. Whatever happened to Pat Peterson? He kind of disappeared in Donna Mills and... Haley Mills and all those people. Right. 77 Sunset Strip and the Partridge family, the guy with the eyes, oh. has yet to vote. Better call him up and get him on top of it. This is Neil Rogers. Get on it, Ken. This is your first 60 QAM. It's day Absolutely. in Miami Town. Are you sure? At 560 WQAM. Come here, come here. Quick, what? Yeah! What are we going to do? I've got a radio show. Yeah, wise guy. Ah! Ain't no laughing matter. I got Soros over here. There's trouble in paradise. We got a manager that knows about radio. There's trouble in paradise. Oh, yeah. You might find out how bad my show blows. I guess to find something else to talk about. Besides ragged sport holes. How about women in topics now? You don't know. Yeah. Kiss my boot. Yeah. Lick my butt. Yeah. Take like I don't get none. Yeah. Take like you're my checkered pants. Yeah. Then assume a penalistic stance. Yeah. There's trouble in paradise. They might want some entertainment. There's trouble in paradise. You're gonna miss that sport whole game. You're gonna have to get along with me now. And get it back to you. Did he say no mo? Yeah. Well, we ain't got no mo mo. Oh well. Can't believe all these people out of town. There's something going on this weekend. There's something really strange. It seems yesterday and today. I don't know. Shavuot. Is it Shavuot? I don't know. When the hell is Purim already? Store? You keep uh, threatening March to tell me when Purim is, huh? Isn't it March? It's either in February or March. It varies by the year. We're, not, we're going by the Jew calendar. I know, for but those we're going by the calendar man. behind uh, Josh over there. And, and I, what I does it say it, on there? I don't know. Flip the sh- page there. Flip Josh. the what? The page. Uh. <laughs> I was going to say the sheet. Oh. oh, I see. Well, it came out kind of like, uh, yeah. Well, you're boarded flip in the middle the, uh, there. page. Didn't want to get close to it. Yeah, flip this. Uh, park, <laughs> park your magic swanger, Froggy. So what does it say? When is Purim? It's, uh, it's, spelled, with, the lo- huh? it's spelled with a P there. Yeah, P U R M for the Goyam out there. I'm going to have to go in there and find it. He can't. Anyway, find you'll it. get like some uh, hummantaschen and some rogalach. And, uh, yes, see, that's I will. good. You, you guys eat all the food like those sloppy sausages today from uh, John the Baker. And I can uh, listen to it and enjoy it without getting my uh, blood sugar going up to 10,000. And by the way, John Jarris, don't send me no more candy, you lunatic, you Nazi bastard. Curtis Stevenson coming up next. Mad Dog, whose family is just brawling with everybody. They're pissed off and fired up at Gatsby's and Davy at 4. Len and Troy at 7. Eddie K. 10 o'clock tonight. Bye, bye, bye!